constituents. Uh, I will give way once more time to the lady here. I thank the honourable. <laughs> I thank the honourable gentleman for giving way. Will he acknowledge? that the only reason he is able to reel off these statistics yes. is because this Conservative yeah, yeah. government yeah. has ensured that we now have 91% of monitoring across the country, soon to be 100% of monitoring across the country. And will he also acknowledge that this has only happened under a Conservative government and that the last Labour government did absolutely not? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not one to offer Jim my mom. to the Conservative benches, but I would just say this. For eager backbenchers bobbing for their whips, you might want to check your constituents' own data before oh, getting up to oh, defend oh, so, the record. Sorry, sorry. Mr. Seeley, I'm hoping you're trying to catch my eye, but you won't do it by keep chundering from that position. Jim McMahon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, because she will know that her own constituency has had nearly 2,000 sewage dumps taken in place. Yeah. Well, that's fine. If she wants to defend that record to her constituents, yeah, then so be it. Yeah. And if she doesn't want to remind her constituents, I can guarantee this, the Labour candidate will. Absolutely. And that's what this debate is about. And that's why yeah. members are so exercised. Let's be honest. Our members exercised because our rivers, our lakes and our seas are being dumped on. Or are they exercised because now they've realised they might have to face the consequences of that dumping. That's what the excitement's about. I'm going to make some progress. I'm going to make some progress. Now, the government will blame everybody. The Victorians, devolved administrations, home drainage, house builders, people flushing items down the loo. Now, it's true this has to be faced on multiple fronts, but there is one common theme that's run throughout the Secretary of State's period. What is it? They never take responsibility. Yeah. It's always somebody else's fault. Yeah. It's never at the door of the government. But let me be clear. The levers of power, the levers of power were always there to be pulled. Yep. And the truth is, the government didn't even lift a finger to try. And that's why we're in this situation here today. I'll give way at the back. I thank my honourable friend for giving way. A hundred years ago in St Helens we had chemical factories, coal mines, glass works and no environmental regulations, but with eight hundred and thirty five sanctioned spills in 2022. Pollution in our rivers and waterways is arguably worse now than it was then. So does he share, does he share the frustrations of the volunteers who look after the Sankey Canal and Valley, uh, who engage in activities like litter picks that no matter how much rubbish they can get from the towpath, there's ten times more going into the canal itself? Right, Bob. It's a really poor point. You know, for many of our urban communities, because many people think, well, this must be an issue that affects our seas, our national parks, but it goes to every community. If you live in an urban community, the stream near your home, the canal network is being dumped on. And for many communities, that's all they have. That is their bridge to nature. And it's being treated with such disrespect by this government in a way that can't uh, carry on. And I want to just return to this issue of the levers of power, because quite a lot of what I hear is that the scale of the challenge is overwhelming. To face it is far too great a uh, mountain to climb. But economic regulation of the water industry in both England and in Wales has always been controlled by the Tories here for the last 13 years, treated England and Wales as an open sewer. And that's a lever that could have been pulled to improve water performance, holding water companies to account and resourcing the work needed to combat sewage pollution England. Well, I hear, I hear the Environment Secretary chuntering, and hopefully she's going to address this. To be absolutely clear, to be absolutely clear about where power sits in our democracy, where government responsibility sits when it comes to water. Firstly, economic regulation, the levers of power, the purse strings are not devolved at all to the water. Oh, 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 order. Uh, uh, I've got a point of. Uh, I hope it's a point of order, Mr. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. I seek your guidance as to whether the Shadow Secretary of State may have inadvertently misled the House. He said moments ago that uh, water policy and environmental policy were uh, reserved, and he gave the impression that they were reserved policies, where really they are devolved policies. Maybe, I suspect, Mr Speaker, that he might be embarrassed that the Welsh Government have not acted in this case, and that he is seeking to obfuscate responsibility. I want to know, I've told you before, when I stand up, I expect you to sit down. And when I 
start to speak, I don't expect you to carry on speaking. Mr Kearns, you've been pushing your luck for quite a few weeks, and I'm quite serious now. When I stand up, I hope that in future you will take notice, because we will make sure you do it. And I don't want to get to that point, but you're certainly pushing me towards it. First of all, I'm not responsible for what the Shadow Secretary of State says. What I would say is the Secretary of State has heard your point, even though it wasn't a point of order. I will now leave it with the Shadow Secretary of State. Jim Mike yeah, yeah. well, Thank you. I'm not sure if Parliament can do some kind of induction for Conservative members into how Parliament works and where yeah. power sits. But to be absolutely clear, to be absolutely clear, listen, the House of Commons Library are really good at providing briefings uh, for MPs. Let's be really clear. Economic regulation. The economic regulator off what reports only and solely to the Environment Secretary for UK. That's a matter of fact. That isn't devolved. It's for the UK. And it's the economic levers of power that have allowed £72 billion of shareholder dividends to go out the door on one side, while England and Wales have been turned into an open sewer on the other. That goes right to the door of the Secretary of State for Environment. And I credit Labour in Wales for their record in leading on nature and leading on the environment. And like me, they are saying that whether it be England or Wales, every part of the land that we care about, that we love, where working people have a right to a decent life, should be kept in a good check uh, and with the respect that it deserves. Now, I'm going to make some progress. I'm going to make some progress. Now, I think Conservative MPs should see this as a second chance. Everyone deserves a second chance. Let's take our mind back to the first chance, uh, which was the passage of the Environment Act, an amendment that Labour backed that would have placed a legal obligation to progressively bring down sewage dumping, blocked by MPs on this side who voted against it. So fallen at the first test, but we believe in second chances, and today provides that second chance to right that wrong before and to get behind Labour's plan to clean up the Tory sewage scandal today. Now, I want to come to Labour's record, because the Conservatives would have you believe that this is inevitable, that there is nothing we can do about the scale of dumping that's taking place, that there is no alternative, or somehow it's always been terrible. That isn't what the evidence says. Now, the last Labour government has a proud record of delivering improvements in water quality. Shortly after the Labour Party left office, the Environment Agency, her own department, reported that our rivers were cleaner than at any time than before the Industrial Revolution. In fact, it was in 2002, it was in 2002 when the then Environment Secretary, the former member for Oldham Western Royton, uh, as it happens, celebrated how clean the water was when he took to the water in Blackpool with cameras looking on to celebrate that proud moment when it met bathing water uh, quality status. I wouldn't think the Environment Secretary today would have the confidence to go swimming in the shores of Blackpool, given over the last year it's had 22 incidents of raw human sewage being dumped in that water's 62 hours straight into the Irish Sea. And so we've shown that Labour will clean up the, so- the Tory sewage scandal. We've done it before, and we can do it again. And in the absence of any leadership from the government, Labour is stepping up. Today, finally something worth getting behind. After waiting for 13 lost years, a whole generation of opportunity taken away. I want to address cost. Now, we're in the middle of a Tory cost-of-living crisis. Households are being hammered. At every angle, it seems like things are getting worse and not better. People see that when they go to the supermarket for their shop. Again, I should say, a risable failing on behalf of the Secretary of State responsible for food, who doesn't think it's her job to have a round table of the food industry. Straight through to energy bills and mortgages, people are feeling the pinch. And when it comes to water bills, let's be clear, people are already paying for a service. And sewage treatment is is identified, itemised on every one of our bills, but it's just not being delivered. And instead, the Tories are allowing water companies to cut corners and to dump sewage untreated. Now, does that mean to come on to this point? Because it it ties in. It ties in with following the money and tracking back to the impact. Because the storm overflow data, this is the data that water companies themselves provide to the government, 
tells us that not a single one of the dumping incidents from last year were a result of exceptional circumstances. It wasn't down to rainfall, it wasn't down to storms. The water companies themselves and the government say it's nothing to do with any of that. It's a lack of treatment and it's a lack of investment. So not a single one. Not a single one. Well, I would hope the member can learn to be quiet without the attention, uh, quite frankly. It's just, it's just basic good sense. It's just basic good sense. Let me make some progress. Because we need to address this issue about who pays. We believe that the polluter should pay. Now, at the same time, water companies have walked away with £72 billion in dividends, and water bosses are enjoying payments of millions of pounds and bonuses even after sewage dumping has been identified. And this is what this bill is all about. It's about fixing those loopholes that allow poor practice, corner cutting, and to ensure that the government and the water companies together are acting in the public interest. It's not right that working people are paying for the privilege of raw human sewage to be dumped in their communities. I will now give way. He's been very persistent. I thank the, I'm not the shadow I'm taking. Paul Lawrence. <laughs> I, I thank the Shadow Secretary of State for giving way, and I noticed that his paragraph on the Labour record was very short. Perhaps it's because, under their government, 7% of sewage discharges were monitored by government, where it is now 91%, with an ambition of 100% through the legislation that the Secretary of State has laid down. Why can't he stand at the dispatch box and welcome that? and actually accept that his government did absolutely nothing about this issue yeah, in their time yeah, in government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim Mike Bob. I'm not sure that, I'm not sure that was worth waiting for. <laughs> I've got, you were so persistent. So persistent, I thought a gem, a nugget would come that would really advance the debate. Um, but the House was left wanting uh, yet again. I'm very proud of Labour's record. We went from the industrial pollution that was affecting our rivers and our canals, to the cleanest water since before the Industrial Revolution. That was a progress. That was the legacy that should have been built on, but it was trashed. We've gone backwards and not forwards. Now, we need to change the culture within water companies to demand change. Setting down legally binding targets, enforcing straightforward penalties for failure. Now, this bill protects bill payers in law. No ifs, no buts. The cost must and will be borne by water companies and their shareholders, protected in the text of the bill in black and white. And that's the basis of this motion. And it's what members on all sides of the House will be voting for later yeah. today. Not a fabricated version of reality that doesn't hold to the evidence. Not more jam tomorrow, asking people to wait to 2050 at the earliest to see an end to the sewage scandal. In black and white, a plan finally to end this scandal. Now, let me just outline what the bill does before I begin to close and allow the mem members who have submitted uh, to speak. This bill will deliver mandatory monitoring on all sewage outlets and a standing charge for water companies who fail. That will mean, that will mean, one minute, that will mean where a discharge station isn't in place or where it's not working, the water companies will pay a standing charge, assuming that sewage is being discharged. Automatic fines for discharges, ending this idea that you've got to go through a costly, protracted investigation and prosecution to hold water companies to account. Water companies will pay on day one, the second sewage is discharged. And legally binding targets to end sewage discharges, the scandal, by 2030. And we will give power to the regulators to require them to properly enforce the rules. And critically, and in black and white, we will make sure that this is funded by enrolling shareholder dividends, not adding further pressure onto households through the customer <laughs> bill. And let me be clear that any Tory abstention, any votes against this motion and the current bill is yet another green light to continue the Tory sewage scandal. I'll give way once more before I wrap up, just on the front. Bags, mate, the honourable gentleman has made the absolute fatal error of thinking that we are supporting the water companies. We are holding them to account, which is exactly why we have threatened them with unlimited fines. It is exactly why Ofwat has passed new rules to restrict the dividend payments. It is exactly why we now have the most stringent measures in Europe on water companies. What did the Labour Party do? Because they didn't hold water companies to account. Yeah. 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 Jim Mike Barr. 
Well, he's definitely Corey Favour with the Whips office, and I give credit, I give credit to him, to, to the way which he energetically read out the Conservative Whips office uh, top lines. Uh, now, let, let me just say this. Now, let me just say this. Well, one second, because we had uh, earlier uh, the uh, comment from uh, the member uh, for Hastings and Rye that her office wasn't informed of the visit that took place where we met our fantastic candidate, Helena Dollamore, uh, just on there. And uh, I've got uh, the email here uh, that proved not just that her office was emailed, but that the email was also acknowledged by her office uh, as well. So I, I would just say gently, uh, before members raise a point of order on such an important matter. Sir, I don't know whether the member wants to come back on that. No. no. OK, then carry on. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Makes the first. Just like all the rest of it. I don't know. I just don't know. What. To, to come straight to the point around, have the Conservative government in the 13 years in office treated this with the importance that's needed and dealt with the, the water companies? He can, he can answer the question. He can answer the question to his constituents. Over the last 13 years, why has an average of £1.8 billion every year been taken in shareholder dividends and not invested in water infrastructure? That's a record. I don't care about what the Whips office brief out. I care about the evidence base. That's where every debate in this House uh, should be uh, dealt with. So I just ask him respectfully maybe to go away and to test the evidence rather than reading the top line. Now, this is the first step. I'm going to bring this so close. There are lots of members who are put in to speak in this debate, and they have the right to have their debate heard. So let's wrap it up. This is the first step in Labour's reform of the water industry, and it works towards building a better Britain. But after 13 years, the Tories have run out of road. They've run out of ideas and they've run out of time. Yeah. Labour is ambitious for Britain and we're ambitious for working people. And that starts with treating the country with respect, working people with respect and local businesses with the respect that they deserve too. Thank you. Yeah. The, the question is, that's on the order paper, I call the Secretary of State, Dr Therese Coffey. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The public are rightly disgusted by the excessive sewage discharges from storm overflows. So am I. So are my colleagues on this side of the House. Indeed, I think that's true across everybody in this House. And so is this Government. And that is why we have taken more action than any other Government on this issue. We created our storm overflow discharge plan with an impact assessment showing it will require the largest ever investment by the water industry of up to £56 billion. Pounds. And last month, we set out our new comprehensive integrated plan for water to deliver clean and plentiful supply for people, businesses and for nature, building on the significant investments already made and the progress we have already made since 2010 in cleaning up our waters. Nearly three in four beaches are rated excellent for bathing. That's up from just half in 2010, when Labour left power. We have taken on the micro and single-use plastics that are a plague for marine life. We are supporting the super sewer in London that is taking over 10 years to construct. And there is consistent action right across the country on cleaning up our waters. And that is why we are seeing much-loved species like seahorses, otters and seals returning to our rivers and seas. But it is by requiring water companies to start monitoring that we unveiled the scourge of sewage. It was a Conservative minister, Richard Bennion, a Conservative minister, who ordered that. Yeah. And by the end of this year, all CSO outflows will have monitors, not by 2030, but by the end of this year. Yeah. And formed by monitoring, we are now in the situation where the water companies are under active criminal and civil investigation by the Environment Agency and Ofwat, the largest investigation ever. And that is why, Mr Speaker, I move the amendment in my name and that of the Prime Minister. Because, Mr Speaker, this Government has already taken action. Now, reading the motion today, we already have a target for reduction in sewage discharges, which we will put into law. We have already consulted to remove caps on financial penalties, and we have already undertaken an assessment of sewage discharges. But unlike the Opposition, we have a credible, costed plan to stop the scourge of sewage. Now, today, we have already heard a barrage of blame, a finger-pointing, but when it comes down to it, we have not had a credible credible costed plan to tackle this. 
You know, I'm used to the personal attacks, the diatribes, the cheap shots. Yeah. I tell you, Labour's plan is not a cheap plan. I grew up, or my parents lived in Frodsham for some time, so I'm very conscious of the River Weave. And of course, I grew up in Liverpool, so I'm very conscious of the River Mersey. That has got cleaner and cleaner over time, thanks to ongoing, continued investment in all that time. And, and what I would say, you know, frankly, we should be having a grown-up to date about the public. You know, frankly, a lot of this plan that he sets out is pointless because it's already being done. And to some extent, you know, frankly, we were talking about food. I guess the honourable gentleman has taken up growing magic mushrooms. You know, he's trying to keep the. They didn't publish this data. They weren't monitoring it. They kept people in the dark and they fed them BS for all the time they were in government. <laughs> Honourable friend for giving way. Isn't she slightly surprised by the tone that's been struck by the opposition in today's debate? And doesn't she agree with me that they rather need to show a bit more humility? Because if they were really serious about these proposals being their official party policy, wouldn't we expect to see some evidence of that being implemented in a part of the country where they're in power, namely in Wales, where there is no, are no targets, there is no credible plan for tackling this issue? Yeah. Yeah. Friends is absolutely right. I mean, I guess I'm, I'm just uh, concerned that the Shadow Secretary of State, who is ambitious to take my job in the future, I'm confident the Conservatives will win the next election, partly because we're used to dealing with this sort of rubbish which we have to clean up when Labour leaves office. But what I will say to him gently, off what is a non-ministerial department, the Welsh Government sets the strategic policy statement to off what for matters in Wales. It is a devolved matter and he should be aware that of course he's dragging his, uh, the Welsh Government into uh, this today, but he should be aware that they have uh, in 2022, they had on average 38 spills per outflow in Wales. In England, it was down to 22. So, just to say, this is not a straightforward issue to tackle. And I have to say, Wales are not doing well at it. But I'm not going to blame them out loud. I'm conscious they'd be better following us and having a credible cost of plan yeah. instead of thinking, looking to Westminster. I'll give way to the Honourable Lady. Lucas. Well, I'm grateful to her for giving way because the complacency she's demonstrating is frankly. And frankly shocking. Not one English river is classed as being in healthy conditions. None meet good chemical standards. Few meet good ecological standards. And they have been in power 13 years. That is a record of failure. When you look as well at the fact that dividends now average £1.6 billion a year, that's money going out of the system altogether, why won't she actually accept that privatisation has been a complete failure, put it back in public hands and make sure the investment goes where it's needed? Well, Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Lady should be aware, of course, that uh, during our time in the last decade, we uh, put into place legislation that made it tougher to meet ecological status. That includes taking on the monitoring of certain chemicals, which isn't done by the Welsh or, government, uh, Welsh or Scottish governments. And that's why we'll continue to work on this in quite a specific way. But what I will say to her is that we are absolutely leaning into this issue. You know, we knew, I genuinely wish, they would started to sort out the issues while they were in the office. Um, I'm not saying they did completely nothing, but they certainly weren't being clear with the public right, on what was going on. And we knew in 2010, just in a moment, that there was no money left after Labour's damage to the public purse. The Labour Chief Secretary then was honest enough to tell her that as in his own writing. What we didn't know was quite the mess left behind for yet again a Conservative government to clean up. And that is what we've set about doing. I give way to my honourable friend. I write honourable friend. Sir Oliver Hill. Since the privatisation that's just been criticised, the amount of investment has doubled yeah. and, and has been £160 billion. Pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 My honourable friend is right. And when we're talking about sources of financing, I mean, does the honourable lady or indeed the opposition want to see fewer hospitals being built, fewer schools being built, and yeah. all the other ways that we are spending taxpayers' money? I'm conscious uh, that my honourable friends from Black Bracknell would like to uh, intervene. Jim Sutherland. Mr Speaker, I listened earlier to what the Labour front bench had to say. Under the last Labour government, the pumping of raw sewage into our waterways <coughs> was unregulated, unmonitored and completely unrestricted. Since 2010, this government has increased monitoring of outflows to almost 100 per cent next year, £150 million of punitive fines of water companies and has sponsored investment of over £56 billion over decades into the water network. This is the first government to tackle this issue for many decades. Yeah. Does Secretary of State agree with me 
that the Labour Minister was talking poo. <laughs> I made it, I made it. Say Rooster. Well, Mr Speaker, I think that was a, a polite way of what we heard. But, um, of course, uh, Mr Speaker, sewage overflows themselves are not new. We know they are a result of Victorian plumbing infrastructure combining wastewater and surface water pipes designed to eat, act as a safety valve. So the impact of heavy rainfall would not lead to sewage backing up into people's homes. Now, that is over 100 years ago, and since privatisation, we saw that much-needed investment into our leaking water network, such that uh, uh, certainly over 30 per cent, if not close to 40 per cent, of pipes have been replaced in that time. But, of course, it was in Labour's time in government, starting back in 2003, when it was actually the European Union that took the Labour government to court in relation to sewage discharges from overflows. It was in 2009, it was the Labour government who introduced operator self-monitoring, allowing water companies to mark their own homework. But with minimal progress under Labour, it was, as I said earlier, a Conservative minister who recognised the problem and that we needed an objective means of measuring discharges. And that's why, in 2013, water companies were instructed to monitor when and for how long their storm overflows operate. Now, this data is published online, and thanks to our Environment Act, this will now need to be provided in near real time. And as I have said already, all storm overflows will be monitored by the end of this year. And it's the monitoring and opening up in just a moment. Of op- it is the monitoring and opening up of information that has exposed the scale of this issue. It's why we've already had successful criminal prosecutions. It's why we have that unprecedented criminal investigation underway right now. And it's why, frankly, we see a Labour Party desperate to make, m- make up for their failures when they were in office. I give away to my honourable friend. Thank my right honourable friend for giving away. And would she also be kind enough to clarify to the House that when we talk about storm overflows, mm. that in most cases, certainly mm. in my constituency, that is over 95% of rainwater and is yeah, yeah. certainly at no point raw sewage yeah. being dumped onto our beautiful exactly. beaches. Yeah. She's right. Well, I agree with my honourable friend, and I think you know facts are our friends on these matters, and uh, it's important that we continue to make sure our conservative, our, our, our constituents are well informed. Now, I do agree with the shadow secretary of state. There's a massive difference between a press release and a plan, a big difference. And we've already set out our plans, and we're delivering them. The environmental improvement plan, our integrated plan for water, which is tackling all forms of water pollution, from transport and metal mines to forever chemicals and farming and indeed our storm overflow reduction plan. And that's why I'm saying pleased to announce today that we are planning to enshrine this further in law. And through the Environment Act 2021, we will legislate for a clear target on storm overflow reduction in line with our plan. So that clear, credible, in just a moment, and costed legally binding target, that will add to our transparent and determined approach to solve this issue, while also being careful with consumer bills. I give way to the Honourable Lady. State for giving way. She will know because she grew up in Liverpool. She'll know how beautiful the constituency of Wirral West is. It's a it's a, a coastal constituency. The Rivers Trust found that a sewer storm overflow in Caldy spilled 75 times for a total of more than 1,700 hours in 2022, discharging directly into D, the D estuary. This is a very beautiful part of the world. It's somewhere people where, go to enjoy the beach, to walk, let the children play on the beach, they enjoy water sports and, and so forth. It's also very important oh, environment. Order. This is meant to be an intervention. It isn't a speech. If she wants to intervene, it has to be really, really brief. Secretary of State. Well, I share with the Honourable Lady uh, my love of that part of the North West. Of course, that's where I grew up. I used to cycle down to the River Mersey very regularly on the Otterpool Prom. Um, not quite so much a visitor to the other side, apart from when I was visiting family um, elsewhere. But what I will say to her, it's thanks to the openness of this government in getting that monitoring done, publishing it, that that scourge of sewage, the scale of it, has been unveiled. And she should welcome that. But she should also welcome the active plans that we are doing and have been undertaking with investment. And there's going to be even more to try and reduce, if not eliminate, uh, that sewage underway. So I'll give way to my honourable friend. I thank the Secretary of State for giving way. I have the River Itchen and the River Hamble in my constituency, and I'm a, it's a privilege to represent that constituency. I met Southern Water last week, who have now got an investment plan, purely because of the 91% of monitoring that this government has put in place. Would that infrastructure investment be able to go ahead if we were just having 7% of rivers monitored? 
Well, I think Such quite clearly study. the answer would be no. There wouldn't be the scrutiny that there is today. There wouldn't be the investigations that are already underway. And what I will say to my honourable friends is, you know, the Hamble is a very precious sailing uh, river. I know that uh, going out into the Solent, and it's important that people have confidence. And that is why our plan has that investment uh, behind it, and that we will continue to make sure that we continue to make sure our uh, waters are cleaner and cleaner than ever before. So after many sem. Um, I won't wait, I'm just trying to make a bit of progress. But after many press releases, Madam Deputy Speaker, it's good to finally see a little bit of detail regarding what the party opposite will do about sewage. But as I've already said, to some extent, this is already being done. So that's why today, frankly, feels like another gimmick, if not a sham from the party opposite. Now, I understand in the bill that's been hastily prepared, and uh, I believe it was published last night, uh, that he is pulling Wales into this, and we've already somewhat covered this, but you know, based on his logic, I'm not surprised he's embarrassed about the Welsh record. Yeah. And if the longest sewage discharge for the longest sewage discharges in 2022 in Britain uh, last year, the top two were in Wales. In terms of hours of sewage discharge by constituency, three of the top five constituencies were in Wales. That's according to the top of the poops. Now in 2022 the average number of spills per outflow in England was 23. In Wales it was 38. As I said, I'm not seeking to blame the Welsh Government, but candidly, facts are our friends, and we, that's why we will keep going. Instead of the fudge, instead of the obfuscation, we'll keep going with our credible plans, because we are determined to clean up our waters. Now, I will give way to my hon. Friend. I'd like to thank the Right Hon. Lady for giving way. Would she agree with Law Wales, and I quote, Seneth Cymru generally has legislative competence in relation to all aspects of water quality, water resources and water industry in Wales. And contrary to what the Shadow Minister said, this is the responsibility of the Welsh Government. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, my honourable friend is absolutely right, as is the person he quoted. I mean, this is a matter dealt with by the Welsh Government, and they issue the same strategic policy statement, two off what, that is delivered uh, by my department, and uh, indeed a price review is underway right now. But going back to some of the other different elements, I will give them. Thank you to my right honourable friend for giving way. When she introduced legislation, uh, clearly it would be aimed at England. Did she give the Welsh Government the option of extending that legislation, the tighter restrictions, to also include Wales, to ensure there would be a tighter uniform structure across both nations? Well, understandably, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, the Environment Act uh, principally addressed England, and it's important that we respect the devolution of the Welsh Government. And they have it in their own powers to act, and they undertake different uh, things in what they do. Uh, but I think uh, it's fair to say um, I don't think they shy away from the fact that this is a difficult um, uh, task. It's a difficult challenge. And while I recommend them on the many beautiful beaches that there are in Wales, which I've visited many times in my life, um, including in both honourable members, uh, right honourable members' constituencies, this is not straightforward to do. It's not an overnight fix. It has to take credible plans, and that is why this government is right to be progressing with them as well. I'll give way to the um, uh, chairman of the select committee. Further to the previous intervention, would she agree with me that um, Welsh Water is a not-for-profit organisation? To the argument that the Shadow Secretary of State makes about using dividends to pay for this doesn't wash in Wales. <laughs> Well said, uh, my right honourable friend. I give way to my honourable friend from Devon. Then, then um, thank you for giving way, Secretary of State. Uh, East Devon residents are rightly disgusted by sewage in our waters, and so am I. I'm glad the Secretary of State agrees with that. I live by the sea in Sidmouth. I've repeatedly called on South West Water to clean up their act and our water. They've been fined millions thanks to this government, and they shouldn't ever reward failure with bonuses. Does my right honourable friend agree with me that if they don't clean up their act, they must face the full force of the law, including unlimited penalties? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I absolutely do agree with my honourable friend, and that's why we have the foresight in the Environment Act. We listened to the regulators. We wanted to understand what it was. They offer, asked us to make sure they could have the powers in the future to link dividend payments to performance, including environmental performance. That is being done. It's why also we're going ahead and we've completed the consultation. We now need to review it. Um, and it is my intention, we know that the preferred intention is that the Environment Agency will be able to uh, uncap or have unlimited penalties, and I think that will be welcomed by his bill payers. Now, Madam Deputy Speaker, yes, I will. Sorry, I said I'd come back to the Honourable Gentleman. There we go. Secretary of State, and I've listened intently to what she's had to say, and I, I admire her confidence, actually, but it's, it's not confidence that's shared by certainly my constituents and a lot of the public out there. 
about just what the condition of our rivers are like. So can I invite her uh, to perhaps come down to my constituency to look at the River Avon, perhaps Donna Cosy do a gummer and actually get in the water and just see how terrible it is. I missed one of the words that the Honourable Gentleman said. Oh, right, OK. Um, so what I will say to the Honourable Gentleman, I think I am in Stratford-upon-Avon in a few weeks' time, so I may well be able to find time to come and visit him. Um, but uh, I have to say, Madam Deputy Speaker, I, I, haven't, uh, I have a lot of rivers and the course of the sea in my own constituency, Suffolk Coastal, which stretches from the Orwell in the south to the Hundred River at the very north, with many rivers in between. I'm very conscious of how important this issue is to our constituents. I'm very proud of the fact that the beaches in Felixstowe have had excellent bathing water status pretty much since the whole uh, qualification arose. I'm also conscious that the uh, beach in South Wild Deans fell out of that status, and that's why I intervened as, my, as a local MP with Anglin Water to, to clean up the treatment works in Southwold, and now I'm delighted to say they're back with a three star. So it is a case of making sure that we have targeted activity, but overall what I expect as Secretary of State is that we get the plans coming through for every storm overflow that I've requested from the water companies by this June. Give way to my honourable friend. I'm very grateful to the Secretary of State. Um, in, uh, my father is a civil and structural engineer and I've actually engaged with him on the topic of sewage pollution very regularly. Uh, but I actually think one of his more familial aphorisms is important, which is to fix a problem, you've got to know about it. So does she agree with me that actually the idea that we now have 90 odd percent knowledge of what's going on that allows us to prioritise plans is a key achievement of this government? My older friend is wise in her years and she is absolutely right. It is a case of trying to make sure we have that information. And I repeat, it was a decade ago that this started, of getting that information out there. And it's why in the Environment Act, we've also legislated uh, in, to allow us to make sure we have near real-time information uh, being made available too. Now, I'm conscious that my honourable friend the Isle of Wight uh, is, uh, want, has wanted to intervene. Thank you very much indeed. I listened very closely to the, uh, to the opposition speech, which I have to say was pretty poor. Yeah. And considering I've, li considering I've listened to quite a few Labour speeches in my time, that takes some beating. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Can, can the Secretary of State shed any light on why a Labour Party that hates privatised utilities would allow self-monitoring of water quality unless it was to hide a problem? Mm. Well, what can I say? When the uh, right hon. member for... When the right hon. member for Hoven and St Pancras ran for leader of the Labour Party, he suggested that there should be common ownership, which I would say was nationalisation. It's yet another flip-flop uh, from the Labour Party when they realise uh, one thing to get into power, another thing when they're actually in it. Yeah. So what I will say is that uh, we need to continue with uh, what we're trying to do in order to cut sewage discharges. Now, there's a question about 90% by 2030. I completely understand the headline-catching figure, but in any previous scrutiny by the media, or indeed today, there's been no credible costed plan. That's why I suggest the Honourable Member is detached from reality and, frankly, trying to pull a fast one with the public. Yeah. Our storm overflows discharge reduction plan outlines the largest infrastructure programme in water company history, and it will deliver the toughest ever crackdown on sewage spills, transforming our Victorian sewage infrastructure. The plan sets targets that will be underpinned by legally binding changes to company permits designed to front load action in particularly important areas such as bathing waters. And to ensure these ambitious targets are realised, I've asked the water industry to produce a detailed action plan for every single storm overflow in England by June. And a critical element in the development of these targets in our plan was an assessment of technical deliverability and cost. Yeah. Yeah. That's why the government published a full impact assessment and an additional report on the cost of eliminating discharges from storm overflows. Now, if the Shadow Secretary of State would like to deliver 90% of reduction by 2030, I guess it would have helped if he could have uh, uh, informed this House on how he actually planned to practically deliver £56 billion pounds worth of capital projects in the next seven years, never mind separating enough combined pipes to go almost two and a half times around the earth in just seven years, or indeed build 40,000 Olympic sized swimming pools of additional storage capacity. I mean, we have to. Uh, I will give one, way to my own friend in just a moment, but you know, what will the Labour Party's proposals really mean for customers' bills? And even he is not naive enough to think there's a magic money tree for this. I, th I thank the Secretary of State for giving thank way. You, She's just mentioned the very important thing about water companies producing plans. Can she reassure me and all the people of the South West and South Devon that these plans will have to be enforced and that we will be keeping a very firm eye on their implementation? 
Indeed, I can give my assurance to my honourable friend, and indeed uh, uh, we will continue to make sure that the licence fees, and that is funded to supposed to in include inspections in the uh, permits that they have, the cost of the permits they're paid, and we will be also considering further uh, what further changes might be needed in terms of uh, funding to support that through the uh, licence uh, permit uh, fees. Um, I have to say, Madam Deputy Speaker, perhaps there was going to be a sewage tax or something else as set out by the Liberal Democrats, or though that tax would take some 500 years to fund the level of investment required. Dare I say, it's another classic Lib Dem policy or soundbite, but detached from reality, uh, while we have an ambitious, credible and realistic plan. In terms of uh, mandatory sewage out mo outlet monitoring, the government is already doing this, already 91 per cent in place, and the rest will be completed by the end of this year. But I'll just make a few more points. The Environment Agency will also make sure that water companies are carrying out monitoring in line with their permit conditions. And the monitoring requirements introduced by this government have been instrumental in enabling the regulators to undertake the largest criminal and civil investigations in water company history, with the sewage discharges uh, covering over 2,200 treatment works. And it's through the powers in our Landmark Environment Act that we're also making it a legal requirement to have that near real-time data on sewage discharges available to the public. And the consultation for those regulations is live now. So we are going even further as we are placing a duty directly on water companies to monitor the water quality impact up and downstream of all their assets, not just storm overflows, but wastewater treatments too. I give way to the honourable gentleman. I'm very grateful to the Secretary of State. Of course, it's not just the responsibility of the water companies, because it's not just water company assets that discharge into our rivers. On the River Tame in Greater Manchester, uh, within a short section, there are three water assets, but there's also Johnson Brook and Wilson Brook. Johnson Brook regularly uh, discharges raw sewage into the Tame because of a misconnected sewer somewhere along uh, the reaches of that brook, and Wilson Brook regularly discharges chemicals into the Tame because of in, uh, industrial processes. The Environment Agency's actions are appalling. What more is she order, doing? Or, 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 we just can't have these long interventions. We just can't because there are too many people who want to speak. It's simply not fair. Secretary of State. Well, I don't. Obviously, uh, the Honourable Gentleman is raising very specific constituency matters. I'm sure that if he were to write to me or to the Water Minister, that we could follow up on that particular matter. Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm conscious that a lot of people have put in to speak today, so I want to make a few very uh, further points clear. One of the things has been about automatic penalties. Now, the concern, the advice I've had from officials is that issuing such automatic penalties could actually limit subsequent liability for more serious enforcement action and indeed higher penalties, where investigation found an incident was more severe than initially thought. Now, when a pollution incident occurs, the severity of the incident and the degree of culpability needs to be properly investigated. And it's through that proper investigation that the Environment Agency can determine the most appropriate response, including criminal prosecution for the most serious instance. And I'm sure this is well intentioned, but it strongly risks effectively making enforcement weaker and potentially letting the most serious polluters off the hook. Water companies must be liable for any illegal activity polluters must pay. And that's why since 2015, we've had over 50 prosecutions um, by the Environment Agency. They've secured court fines of over £140 million, including a record-breaking fine of £90 million handed to Southern Water. And that's why we're, going, we're also going further to ensure water companies face substantial penalties, which are easier to deploy than going through the courts. And we're consulting on the reforms to the civil penalties the Environment Agency can issue to make the process quicker and easier. And as I've already said, the government's preferred action, option is to remove the cap on penalties entirely. That would pave the way for unlimited penalties for water companies that make break the rules. I'm conscious many people want to speak today. So I'm, in, in this regard, Madam Deputy Speaker, there is a lot more I could have said. Um, I know that uh, we listened to the Honourable Gentleman for uh, over half an hour earlier, and it is important other people can, can contribute to today's debate. It is the role of Ofwat to scrutinise proposals from the water companies to ensure that customers get good value for money. We will continue to do other activities like trying to reduce the cost of these projects overall. Uh, but I want to also flag that we will be uh, continuing to make sure that we deliver our integrated plan for water. I believe it's a blueprint for a truly national effort to meet the stretching 
targets that we've set through the Environment Act includes actions to tackle every source of pollution, including sewage discharges, but also pollution from agriculture, plastics, road runoff, chemicals and pesticides. That plan is uh, underpinned by significant investment. The scale and deliverability, plus the detail, means it will go further and faster than anything we've ever done before. And it certainly is going further and faster than most developed nations have ever gone before. Madam Deputy Speaker, in, in summary, Labour want monitoring. We've already delivered. Yeah. Labour want fines. We've delivered record fines. Labour want larger penalties. We're making them unlimited. Yeah. Labour say they want stronger sanctions, but they would, in effect, weaken them. Yeah. Labour wants a plan. We've already published one. Ours is fully costed and credible. Labour say their plans won't impact household bills, but they can't say how much it would cost. It was a Labour government that was taken to court by the European Union for allowing discharge of sewage. Yeah, yeah. And 13 yeah. years in Wales, where Labour are actually in government, they're discharging sewage almost twice as often as in England. Oh. That's not a plan. It's an uncosted political game and a recipe for tripling the average water bill. I do encourage the House to support our amendment today. I also encourage to stop the false attacks, to focus on delivering cleaner water. Yeah. That's something all our constituents want. Yeah. The original, in a moment, the original question was, as on the order paper, since when Amendment A has been proposed as on the order paper, the question is that the amendment be made. Um, before, I, before I call the first person to speak and indeed take a point of order, which I will do in a moment, um, it will be obvious that an awful lot of people want to speak this afternoon, so we'll start with a time limit of four minutes. I'm sorry, not five, four minutes, which will quickly go down to three minutes. So I advise most people sitting in the chamber to uh, look at their notes and cut them in half. <laughs> yes. uh, point of order, Sally Ann Hart. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and I would like to apologise to the Honourable Member for Oldham West and Royton. I understand he emailed my office on the 7th of September last year and received a response. Thank you. I'm grateful to the Honourable Lady for setting the record straight with, uh, uh, with that point of order, and I see that the Honourable Gentleman has acknowledged her apology. Thank you. Let us continue with the debate. Four minutes. Chris Evans. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. In September 2021, I stood in this place and called for an investigation into the activities of Dua Cymru Welsh Water. I asked for the to investigate their, their practices and also the Department for Environment, Rural and Rural Affairs. I did this because the responsibility for parts of the Wirral, Cheshire, Gloucester and Herefordshire. This was based on an appalling customer service record which has seen communities where their waters cut off for days and rivers being polluted with sewerage. I am sad to report not only have these calls been met with a deafening silence, but things have got worse. The River Gower, Tawi, Tyvee, Usk and Taff, and even the River Wye are among the six most polluted rivers in the UK. What they all have in common is they are the responsibility of Dua Cymru Welsh Water. Last month, research found that raw sewerage was discharged in Rinsline for over 9,179 hours, and with one, within 1,850 individual sewage dumping, dumping events. Even Natural Resources Wales have said that there will be no salmon in Welsh rivers in the next 20 years. So what is Dua Cymru's response to this record of shame? It is to reward the Chief Executive with a bonus of 232000 This is on top of his basic salary of 332000 This is a company, Madam Deputy Speaker, serving some of the most deprived and isolated communities in the country. Indeed, when I wrote to him querying his pay, he was very proud to tell me he'd worked his way up from an apprentice. But as he said, it wasn't me who decided on my pay. It wasn't determined by me. It's not even influenced by me. Then he goes on to claim that he's pretty much the lowest paid of his peers in England and Wales. Try telling that to the customers who are struggling to pay the second highest bills in the country. Just over the border, seven Trent Water charge some of the lowest bills. The worst thing is it's impossible to switch suppliers. Mr Perry is not an isolated case. Between 2021, three executive directors were paid bonuses of 931,000. At the same time, raw sewage was dumped into Welsh rivers 100,000 times. It all adds up to the same thing. Do Cymru Welsh Water are profiting from pollution? Very briefly, can he explain to the House why 
the report that we're expecting from the Labour Welsh Government on storm overflows is so late? Well, I think he'd have to. I think he'd refer that to the Welsh Government and thank him for his uh, little bit of mischief there and the extra minute he's just given me. It is my sincere hope that, that if this motion passed, we will see the end of these unwarranted and unfair bonuses while by imposing uncapped in fines on these companies for polluting our beautiful rivers. For me, it goes much deeper than simply profiteering. I grew up like many people along the River Taff. I can still remember to my young mind, as I looked into the river, the colour of the rainbow. To me, it seemed rainbows lived in the river. But they were not rainbows, Madam Deputy Speaker. They were the thick, thick film of oil polluting our rivers. That was over 30 years ago. Since then, our Welsh valleys have become green and beautiful with a new emerging tourism industry. It's not uncommon to see fishing, kayaking and well swimming, swimming as activities, but all this is at risk. It is amazing that we have spent so long cleaning up our rivers that all this work has been undone by the work of one company. Although I have to hand it to Dual Cymru Welsh Water. They're very good at crisis communications. After all, according to the chief executive the past year, the company has spent over £800,000 on advertising and public affairs. Even when I spoke out about them some 18 months ago, their public affairs officer sent an email within minutes of me sitting down defending their practices. I will say they are busy whether they are sending endless emails to politicians. Tell I'm grateful to the Honourable Member for Islam for giving way, uh, and I understand and share many of the concerns that he's highlighted. But does he recognise that the legislative responsibility for restrictions lie with the Welsh Government in this area? And does he share my concern and disappointment? that the restrictions in Wales are nowhere near as tight as my right honourable friend, the Secretary of State, is proposing to introduce in England, yeah. Yeah. and that we should introduce a common system according to the high standards, my honourable friend. Yeah. My yeah. Honourable yeah. friend yeah. I have to say, the honourable gentleman, he probably enjoyed my speech because he would think that uh, this is the responsibility of the Welsh Government, but I do think this is, goes much deeper than this. I mean, this pollution affects us all, it affects our children, it affects everybody. I think we have to find a way to work together on this. And I'm not going to stand back just because Dual Cymru hide behind the fact they're a non-profit uh, and allow them to carry on with this. Something needs to be done and something needs to be done now. And that means, means working in partnership with this government and the Welsh government. And I would support any measures to work together on this because I think this goes much deeper than what we are doing at the moment. Well, of course, they like to suggest tweets as well. I should mention the highlighting schemes that are imposing to save customers money. At the same time, they run television adverts with helpful tips for saving money, all in the banner for Wales, giving the impression they are somehow linked to the Welsh Government. To top of my frustration with this company, I had a request from the polling company Ipsos Mori, as many of us do. Of course, the companies who fund these surveys remain anonymous. However, it doesn't take much to deduce when you are asked questions like, how would you rate Duke Cymru's Welsh water performance? Do you know about their, do you know about their plans to end pollution in Wales? It doesn't take a genius to work out who's funding these surveys. When I, when I complained, I was told again by the Public Affairs Department with an apology I should not have been contacted because of my views on the company. The money for this type of work would be better used on improving their service rather than their reputation. Madam Deputy Speaker, as I said, it is difficult to speak out on this matter, but I do genuinely believe things need to be done now. Mr Perry, when he faced the Senate co committee, said sewerage discharges are not where we want them to be. People are paying an average of £499 a year for their bills. They desperately need return on that bill, and I hope by supporting the opposition motion today they will have some sort of reference what they're going through. Thank you. Philip Dunn. Thank you very much, yeah, Madam yeah, Deputy yeah, Speaker, yeah. and it's a pleasure to follow the Honourable Member for Islin. And I actually welcome what he said about trying to work cross-party to solve this problem. And that, frankly, is what I have been doing, Madam Deputy yeah, Speaker, yeah, yeah, yeah. since this Parliament began. Yeah. Uh, indeed, I, I don't want to dwell on the private member's bill that I introduced over three years ago, but it is surprising that it's taken the right Honourable, gen the Honourable Gentleman, uh, the Member for Old and Western Royston, three years to come up with his own private member. Members Bill, which suggests to me, once you've read it, that he has not read the Environment Act that was introduced by this government a year and a half ago. 
It was one of the weakest documents I've ever seen, and it was clearly concocted and manufactured purely for the purposes of this debate. And as he said himself in his own opening speech, it was actually introduced in order to benefit Labour uh, candidates for the parliamentary election whenever that comes, and current local elections next month. So the political opportunism is, is indeed shameful. However, in the spirit of seeking to focus my remarks on something useful, uh, I am going to to try to dissect some of the specific errors as I see it in this bill. First of all, as my right hon. Fred said in her remarks, the first clause talks about water quality monitoring requirements. The Environmental Audit Committee report that we undertook uh, two years ago, Water Quality in Rivers, specifically called for improved monitoring of our waterways. We've heard already that that was introduced as a direct result of the Conservative then Rivers Minister, uh, uh, Lord Benyon, um, to introduce monitoring, and we're nearly at 100%. We called for monitoring upstream and downstream of the impact of discharges into rivers, and that's precisely what was included in the bill. This proposal seeks to accelerate that clause to bring it in effect from the 1st of October. That is completely unrealistic. We have not yet agreed the technical specifications to be able to test the water for the four parameters, so there is no supply chain in place to be able to do that. Hopeless. Second clause talks about adverse impacts and seeking to accelerate uh, and define the progressive reduction of sewage discharges, which is another clause in the Act, trying to bring 90 per cent uh, of such discharges uh, to be prevented by 2030. The Secretary of State has already pointed out that there is no clarity on how much this will cost. We know it could cost hundreds of billions of pounds, a thousand pounds on a customer bill, and would divert the entire construction industry into fixing this problem in this country. So during the sec- next seven years, which hospitals, which schools would not be built as a result of this Labour measure? I'm happy to give away. The Right Honourable Gentleman, but he's making that extraordinarily important point about finding the abal- balance of attracting investment into companies while ensuring that work is delivered to ensure that we are addressing this problem. Do you think we can go further into encouraging water companies to keep that balance in, in order? come on to that in a moment. He makes a very valid point that, that in order to invest the billions of pounds that are in the sewage reduction plan, the water companies uh, can't put that... There's not enough dividend income to pay for that, as the Labour Party fancifully suggests. They can't put all that bill onto customers, so they have to be able to go to the markets that are actively looking to invest in green projects uh, of this nature. So the money is there, but it's only through the, through, uh, the private sector that this will actually get delivered, in my view. So he talks in the third clause about financial penalties and um, Labour calling for penalties for the use of storm overflows. Well, uh, as my right honourable Fred has also said, this is, uh, this is a matter of degree. This is already there, and it is this party that has introduced the Water Restoration Fund, which is being consulted on the moment, so that the over 2,000 investigations into uh, licence breach permit breaches, which are currently being investigated by Ofwat and the Environment Agency as a result of uh, direction from this government, uh, the proceeds of any uh, p- uh, fines from that will go to help make the polluter pay. So this is happening, and what, of course, the, uh, the Labour Party motion would suggest is that uh, uh, th- this would happen instantly, and it would it would put the entire uh, water system into disarray. So it's another completely unrealistic proposition. Fourthly, he co- they call for uh, to reduce uh, to produce a discharge strategy. Well, he's clearly not read the sewage discharge reduction plan that was published a year ago uh, by this government. Finally, he calls for there to be a legal obligation to consult with Welsh ministers. Well, frankly, we've just heard the appalling performance under the Welsh Government of Welsh Water in Wales. Uh, And just to add to the the clarity of the House, of the 83,000 spills in Wales, that represented almost 22% of the total spillages across England and Wales. It is, as far as my last look, the Welsh population was around 5% of the UK, not 22%. It's a hope hopeless case, a a hopeless example, and the last thing we should do is take advice from the Welsh Government. Dan Jarvis. Deputy Speaker, Parliament debated sewage in the summer of 1858 during the Great Stink, so I think that in every respect it beggars belief that after 165 years of technological advancement and social progress, we're still debating sewage polluting our waterways, but we are 
because something is going terribly wrong. The status quo is not working and it is time to consign sewage pollution to history. Because water is not just another commodity, it's a vital public resource and we should manage it for the public good. Now I accept, Madam Deputy Speaker, the task to reform the water industry for the public good is huge and we have to work together to get it right because water is an essential element. But let's be honest about it, filth is found in nearly every UK waterway. Take my constituency of Barnsley, for example. Yorkshire Water pumped raw sewage into our rivers and streams for 13,228 hours in 2022. And these figures are almost certainly underestimates because the monitoring budgets have been cut. It hasn't helped that due to ever tighter budgets, the Environment Agency's role to monitor and when necessary to prosecute illegal dumping in our waterways has been curbed. Since 2010, environmental protection funding has dropped 80% and for enforcement, 40%. Prosecutions fell from almost 800 in 2007-08 to just 17 in 2020-21. Now, although England's main water companies were cautioned or fined over sewage dumping hundreds of times between 2010 and 2021, total fines amounted to just 0.7% of their profits. Water companies paid £57 billion in dividends between their privatisation between 1991 and 2019. So combined with servicing debt, these shareholder payouts have added around £93 to average yearly bills. So this is not some operational issue solved by small tweaks to the failing system. It's a systemic problem requiring transformative action and an approach that sees water as a basic necessity rather than a co commodity. The current arrangements to regulate the water industry mean the regulator is simply not equipped to, to tackle the challenges we face. So, we need a reformed regulator focused on protecting the environment and the public, which should have a social and environmental mission, and a responsibility to help push through a co coordinated plan to address climate change, pollution and infrastructure upgrades. Crucially, a reformed regulator should bring together stakeholders, including local and regional government, but also community groups, businesses and experts. Campaigners should also be included, including stakeholders, not least Fergal Sharkey, for his tireless work to clean up our waterways. Madam Deputy Speaker, regulation of water for the public good means safe, sewage-free waterways and affordable bills that provide value for money for consumers. Cleaning up our water has always been a political choice and it's in the gift of the government if they think it's time for fundamental change. I hope that they do, but I will be strongly supporting uh, our, our front bench motion today because it's past time we started managing our public resources for private profit. Instead, we should be supporting them for the public good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After the next speaker, the time limit will go down to three minutes. But with four minutes, Sir Oliver Heald. Well, Madam Deputy Speaker, can I start by saying that uh, this is an important issue, and I agree with the uh, Honourable Gentleman for Barnsley Central that we should work across all parties in this place to try and improve what is a, a very difficult situation for our constituents and for the country. My constituency has eight chalk streams and I've been campaigning for many years to improve their quality, often with um, support from, from Labour members, such as Martin Salter when he was in the House, very keen uh, angler, uh, and um, people uh, who, who joined the all-party group on chalk streams, which I helped to set up, um, are from all parties. But uh, I was first shocked by the condition of two of my chalk streams in 2007. They ran dry, and these are, these are sort of substantial chalk streams, the Bean and the Mimram. And I, I took the, the Labour Minister to, to see them, and, and you know, he was shocked at the condition of them. Uh, the Worldwide Fund, myself and others, started a campaign, Rivers on the Edge, in order to get uh, the, the, uh, the huge amount of, of water that was being abstracted from these streams uh, to, to get that reduced. Uh, and we were successful in that campaign. 
uh, although by then the government had changed. But uh, it was then became clear that not only were these poor streams being abstracted, they also had pollution, uh, they had problems with agricultural practice next to them, with nitrates going into them, and all sorts of other problems, including the sewage overflows. And I'd like to pay tribute to Charles Rangeley Wilson, who's been involved in all the campaigns on this, about pollution, soil erosion, and, and also my right honourable friend for Ludlow, who, who's... Um, Bill I supported, and uh, I think we both were sort of slightly didn't support the government on one occasion over, over that. But Charles Rangeley Wilson, he chaired the catchment-based approach restoration strategy for chalk streams. And, and this is a, a very good document, and I think that the government uh, is very supportive of it. I know that my, my honourable friend for Taunton Dean came to the, the launch of it at the River Mimram in my constituency. It's a national chalk streams strategy. And uh, although um, uh, many of the uh, recommendations in it are not just about uh, this problem of, of sewage overflows, it does cover that. And the government has taken powers in the Environment Act and the Agriculture Act, which would enable this catchment-based approach to, to tackle the range of issues involved in river quality. And uh, I think the, the water plan, which has been released recently, uh, shows where the investment would be that there would be fines imposed and the reinvesting of money in improving water quality. Uh, one of the main recommendations of that was to have some sort of protection and priority status for chalk streams. And I know my uh, right honourable friends concentrating on water generally, but Lord Trenchard does have an amendment to the levelling up bill, which I wonder if she might be prepared to look at. Um, we, we know that the state of our rivers and streams uh, now is, is not what it should be, but in those years between 2000 and 2010, we really didn't know because there wasn't the monitoring. And it was a sense of shock that our rivers were in the state they were. And I just welcome the fact that the government is now being transparent, is committing to targets, and really taking this on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time limits now are reduced to three minutes. Mike King. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Pope Francis said in 2015 in his encyclical Laudati Si that uh, the earth, our home, is beginning to look like an immense pile of filth and to, he was not wrong when it came to the rivers in the UK and can I thank the, my honourable friend the Secretary of State, uh, Shadow Secretary of State, he came on behalf of the member of Stratford Urmson, a member of Withington where we met recently at Jackson's Boat on the Trans Pennine Trail on the River Mersey in my constituency uh, and we, we were met with um, Jamie Woodward from the uh, Physical Geography Professor from Manchester University who is doing so much work for us uh, on the Mersey in our local area and when we met we were so pleased to see how well the Mersey was being used uh, by the cyclists, walkers, we know that there are kayaks, kayakers on it uh, um, but in my constituency according to the environmental agency data United Utilities are the worst offender for dumping sewage into our local rivers and coastal waters and it pains me to say it I, I have a great relationship uh, generally with United Utilities they help with my cost of living events all the time but almost 70,000 discharges into the regions into our regional waterways the smoking gun the incontroversible truth if you like is the loo roll the sand Wear, the baby wipes, bedecked tree roots, branches and plants along the course of the river. The I cycle too uh, from my constituency to Stockport, my honourable friends patch every week and see it with my own eyes. The idea that the Secretary of State, and I may have misheard her say the River Mersey is getting cleaner. Greenpeace recently said it is more polluted than the Great Pacific garbage packs from a re recent scientific investigation that they did. Now her honourable friend next to her has done great work in the floodplains and flood alleviation. So I'm not just making a party political point. The River Mersey rises in Stockport and heads through the northwest to Liverpool Bay. In 2022, it was 70 miles of pollution, with raw sewage being pumped into the water 1,187 times, Thank with the pumping of untreated human feces and urine happening for 3,346 hours. Now... Um, 
This is too important for us all. There are existential consequences for our environment, for our public health and for business that rely on the beauty and the nature to attract business and investment. These waters are the same waters that the children of United Utility staff and their shareholders wade through. It is inconceivable that they continue the practice in this full knowledge. I would like to urge them and their pension funds, Lazard Asset, Management, Blackrod and Vanguard Group, you cannot sanction this any longer. I urge you to do the right thing today. Robbie Moore. Madam Deputy Speaker, and I am really pleased to be here once again having the opportunity to discuss this really important issue uh, once again, because improving water quality, whether it be in our river systems or in our coastal environments, is incredibly important, something which all of us in this House care deeply about. And that's why I was very pleased to have voted for the Environment Act last year, which put in place key mechanisms. One, monitoring. Uh, obligation on all water companies to monitor the water quality and publish real-time data on storm overflows. And we are now at that point of nearly getting to a position where we will have 100% uh, data collection. Two, investment, a requirement on all water qualities to deliver up to £56 billion of capital investment over the next 25 years into improving our water quality. And three, a direction specifically on the Secretary of State to be able to issue a direction on water qualities to ensure that they are enacting their ability to clean up their, uh, our rivers. And four, immediate investment, a direct investment of up to £7 billion in the next 25 years. All of these great measures, but it has to be noted, Madam Deputy Speaker, all measures which the Labour Party, the Liberal Democrats and the Greens actively voted against. Oh, voting against a direct investment of £56 billion in cleaning up our rivers. And that is something that no, all of us should not forget as we're going through this debate. And of course, the Prime Minister and the Secretary of State bringing out the plan for water a requirement that it reinvests all fines that water companies have been um, uh, fined against to actively be put back into uh, reinvesting exactly. in schemes yeah. and to improve our environment, right. something that I'm very pleased that the Conservative benches have brought uh, forward. And locally, Madam Deputy Speaker, in Ilkley, we had the River Wharf, the first river that has been awarded bathing water uh, status in the UK, something um, that was an application that was generated by the Ilkley Clean River Group, which worked incredibly hard on to get that application over the line. And I know that I had many a conversation with the Environment Minister and the Secretary of State uh, on this. And of course, what does that deliver? Actively more involvement in monitoring and has resulted in Yorkshire Water investing up to £13 million in infrastructure work that is getting done in Ilkley. All mechanisms that are going to help improve the River Wharf in my constituency. So I am very pleased about the Environment Act measures that we have brought forward, but I am incredibly disappointed that the Labour Party are using this opportunity to proactively um, do something that we all on the, this side of the House are doing already, bringing forward positive measures that are going to help clean up our river systems. And it's disappointing that once again the opposition are choosing to play party pol yeah, politics yeah, yeah. over something that is much, much more important yeah. to our constituents about cleaning up our river systems. Yeah. Yeah. Samantha Dixon. Thank you, Madam yeah. Speaker. Yeah. We all dream of crystal clear rivers winding their way through the beautiful British countryside into our towns and cities and out into a clean and glistening sea. Sadly, this isn't the image that constituents up and down the country are familiar with. Instead, they're faced with the reality of endless hours of raw sewage being dumped into our rivers. The government has been weak on water companies and soft on sewage. As a result, our rivers and seas are plagued by sewage, agricultural runoff and diffuse pollution. Analysis shows, shockingly, sewage dumping is taking place every two and a half minutes. We all know that the environmental consequences are catastrophic. However, it's not just the environment and the wildlife that are affected. The Tory sewage scandal has serious consequences for public health and for businesses that rely on the beauty and nature of Britain to attract visitors and thrive. This is certainly the case in my constituency of Chester. <coughs> the River Dee flow, flows through my constituency and is one of Chester's greatest assets. It plays a vital part in our history and day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. The groves on the riverbank is home to numerous businesses which rely on the beauty and, of course, cleanliness of the river. 
It's a popular destination for Sestrians and visitors alike to enjoy leisure activities. That is why, when I was elected at the end of last year, one of my first acts was to bring together Welsh Water and local river groups, businesses and residents for a summit of the Dee to set out a vision for a clean river, free from the frequent sewage discharges we see today. Businesses and sports clubs that rely on the river told me of the serious consequences they're facing. People are less keen to take part in river-based activities and customers are even turned away from hospitality on days when the smell is too bad. Chester businesses are losing trade as a direct result of the government's sewage scandal. Indeed, on previous occasions, the world-famous Chester Regatta, the oldest regatta in the world, celebrating its 290th anniversary this year, has had to be abandoned because of sewage discharges. I sincerely hope by the time of the 300th anniversary, sewage discharges will be a thing of the past. According to data published by the Rivers Trust, a total of 919 hours worth of untreated sewage and stormwater was discharged into the river in 2020. Despite nearly half a billion pounds being cut from its budget by the central government in the last 13 years, its innovative projects, like Cheshire West and Chester's Council's new one kilometre rainwater drainage tunnel, that are helping to alleviate the pressure on our sewage system and reduce the amount of foul waste that ends up in the D. But only half the funding was provided towards the drain cost by government. This is just a drop in the ocean or rather a drop in the D, of what's actually needed to tackle the scale of the problem. The scale of change needed to eradicate the need to discharge into the D. Order. I thank the Honourable Lady. Uh, Derek Thomas. Thank you, Deputy, um, we all care about this issue, and I'm a Cornish MP, and I know more than any, anyone uh, really how difficult this issue is for constituents who really care about the quality, not just of water they swim in, but also about marine life and the quality of our rivers for supporting really good ecological systems. But what we, said, what we continually fail to debate in this place is not necessarily, we often refer to the water companies and the responsibility they have, but we don't really talk about that what must go into the system has to come out somewhere. And when you ask a small group of children in primary school, they understand that if we were to switch off storm overflows tomorrow, the sewage and all this waste would come up in their homes. So the idea that we switch this off today and appease all our voters is absolutely ludicrous because they'll soon be arguing about arguing and chasing us down the street because of what we've done to their homes. And I'll give you an example. In Cornwall, in order to reduce storm overflows, septic tanks were not able to be emptied last year. This, in this involved care homes that couldn't clean out their septic tanks, private homes, businesses, and it was absolute havoc and it was, it was driven by a need to clean up what we put on our land, and I absolutely support that. It was driven by the need to, need to reduce storm overflows. I absolutely support that. But it was done in a way that just didn't understand what the immediate implication would be. Uh, it was a massive problem, and through a lot of pressure from M MPs, we were able to get the Environment Agency to adjust advice in order to allow us to get around this. As a result of that, uh, South West Water are building in massive cap capacity of their treatment plants to store this stuff in times of high waterfall. We need to be really careful that what we ask for doesn't create alternative uh, consequences that actually we would not want to be happening in our own homes and in homes of our, uh, our, homes of our constituents. But actually, this isn't about, the, about government doing nothing. The minister will remember the conversations I've had with her going back many years, where today, because of her actions and others, £50 million is being spent on the other city alone to clean up the water there, the, both the water they drink, but also the, how the sewage is uh, treated and then put into the sea. That is money that is being spent because government in, uh, forced that to happen and ensured that it happened. I've had money spent in St Ives, Carbis Bay, St Earth, massive amounts of money in St Earth, where the treatment plant is, Mausel, Newland and Port Flevin. My experience as an MP is that when you engage constructively with ministers, constructively with the water companies, you can get these things done and you can get them done quickly or at least more quickly than was happening previously. I find this whole debate infuriating because it fails to take the broader responsibility of how do we communicate with our constituents about what water use they use? How do we make sure that councils reduce a runoff into combined sewer systems? How do we work with farmers to understand how we can plough differently just to stop water pouring into, their, into the water systems? This isn't just about beating up water companies who have, as we've heard, the regulation 
uh, by this government to correct the problem as soon as we can. Thank you, Madam well, Deputy Speaker. Speaker. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And having discarded my carefully crafted speech, I just want to make a few key points. I want to start by saying I think that the Secretary of State fails to understand just how strongly our constituents feel about this issue of pollution in our waterways. It's one of the key issues that my constituents talk to me about. And not just now, they've been talking to me for a while. In fact, in April 2021, I had a Westminster Hall debate on this very issue as a result of that pressure from constituents. So this has been a consistent theme. This uh, has been followed, of course, by the many debates we had during the progress of the Environment Bill on the extent of action that should be taken on this particular issue. And we know how much public interest there was on that issue. Now, as co-chair of the Water APPG, I have the chance to speak regularly to water companies, not just my own, and to the regulators to find out what is happening. So I know about the changes that are being proposed. And, um, and that's as, as far as they go. In fact, this morning, we had a presentation from David Black, the Chief Executive of Ofwat, explaining the current framework. But the fact is that the regulators, both the financial regulators of water, Ofwat, and the environmental regulators, are uh, guided by government action and government decisions. And frankly, I believe that we're not going far enough and fast enough in resolving this issue of uh, combined sewage overflows. How can it be right that there's another 27 years to go before we actually reach a state where we've resolved this problem? So I think the government plans are lacking ambition and should go further. And in the end, as I said, it's government which sets those parameters of regulation. And the fact is, as I said, that the government lacked ambition and our constituents want to see improvement much earlier than is being proposed. They want to be able to bathe in rivers and seas without fearing that they are going to be uh, contaminated by uh, sewage overflow and effluent. And that's why I uh, am supporting Labour's plan to act much more swiftly and end this scandal of sewage discharges into uh, rivers and seas. And I hope the government will step up their actions to um, make sure that the scandal ends. Thank you. Duncan Baker. Speaker. The very reason that we are actually uh, standing here today is thanks to the work of the Environmental Audit Select Committee, and that is the work that was largely led by the Honourable Member for Ludlow, who is far too modest and is not in his place at the moment to take a lot of the plaudits of why we are here in, in now. When I have constituents that talk to me about uh, sewage dumping into the sea, I have to say that nine out of the ten times I'm challenged, it's very sad to see they have not been given the proper information in front of them. And the only thing that has been pumped out to them is largely disingenuous uh, mischaracterisation of what is a very deeply serious issue. And after the recent weeks of gutter politics from the party opposite, uh, it seems that they haven't changed their spots today. And it is, in many cases, dangerous for MPs mm. to have some of the accusations yep. levelled at them. Yep. What we should be doing today is being responsible and showing what the government yep. really has done. Yeah. And as a member of the EAC, it was our work that brought it to the government's attention of the appalling conduct of the water companies, the lackadaisical behaviour of the Environment Agency, and it was the work that we put in that largely then led into the strengthening of the Environment Act and what we have today, all courtesy of the Water Quality and Rivers Inquiry inspired by my friend the member, as I mentioned. Now, of course, CSOs must be phased out, but you simply cannot do that overnight, not unless you want to see rainwater and sewage mixed together coming up through our Victorian network into our homes and streets. But the fact is that we didn't know what was happening with any great visibility until the EAC shone a light on it. And our job in this House is to be responsible legislators. We cannot vote for unworkable pieces of law, and the Duke of Wellington's amendment that led to this whole debate was unworkable. We cannot use and we cannot turn off CSOs after heavy rainfall tomorrow. It isn't feasible. What is feasible is the plan of action that we now have going forward. 
Now, in my constituency, we have been responsible. Anglian Water have invested or are investing £30 million in infrastructure to improve sites across my region, including dealing with sewage uh, outflows as well. And it's the responsible action of this government that puts us well ahead of many other countries across the world, including in Europe, France and Germany. And if there is just one statistic that I would leave the party opposite with today, it would be that it is a Conservative government that have increased the percentage of bathing waters classified as good or excellent from 76% in 2010 to 93% in 2022. That is a record of serious improvement, and the plans that we have set out in our new plan for water is a serious step forward in us tackling this problem. Rosie Duffield. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. To be frank, for the last three or four years, my team and I have had to discuss excrement, excrement on an almost daily basis. It's the stuff ruining the lives of my constituents in Whitstable. In a coastal town like ours, so much of course revolves around the sea. Our sailing clubs, seafood and hospitality businesses, our reputation as a top British tourist destination. <coughs> Whitstable is always thriving, busy with dog walkers, boats coming and going, visitors enjoying a pint in the Neptune or a tub of locally caught whelks with their chips. But there are days when regular swimmers and sailors just cannot enjoy our waters at all, and we can see this happen far too often. So-called rare storm events are not at all. We haven't had any storms, yet Southern Water have again <coughs> been releasing sewage into the sea continuously this weekend for 24 hours straight. Why? Of course, Whitstable is still a great place to visit, but while there, these incidents keep on happening, there's a real danger to UK tourism generally having suffered a real hit to visitor numbers since Brexit. French school children who didn't previously require a passport are no longer flocking to Canterbury's market stalls or studying at our language schools. We simply cannot afford the added damage the headlines about sewage are doing to our economy. But it seems not everyone is suffering. Those at the top of these water companies can probably afford to holiday elsewhere. While well, my constituents, whose incomes have taken a considerable hit, are expected to pay their water bills in full. It's little wonder that many are really angry about this. SOS Whitstable are a campaign group <coughs> who formed following a public meeting I held in the summer of 2021 so that residents could directly confront the bosses of Southern Water. They're a group of very driven and knowledgeable com campaigners who give all of their time for free, holding the water company to account and refusing to let them get away with just dumping sewage on our beaches. They recently appeared in Paul Whitehouse's excellent must-watch -watch BBC documentary, Our Troubled Waters, mm. and I'd urge anyone who wants to understand more about this situation to watch it on catch-up. Yeah. SOS also started a petition which recently hand we recently handed into number 10. It calls on the government to consider renationalising the water industry. So please, I have asked three Secretary of States to come and visit our, our town and hear from residents exactly how they're affected. Please come and take me up on that offer. Listen to our <coughs> sailors, our swimmers and our tourist businesses. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cherry Lynn McCraw. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, most colleagues on these benches, myself very much included, have had a fair bit of what I like to call online sewage uh, since the last landmark Environment Bill was passed. Uh, not least since the Duke of, uh, Duke of Wellington's amendment was uh, read in this House. And I have to say that opposition parties uh, like to talk the talk, but they're not actually walking the walk, which is what this government is doing. I served on the Bill Committee for that um, Environment Act, and I was so proud to do so because it was a landmark piece of legislation, and it was the first time that any government was going to actually tackle this problem. And I have to say, Madam Deputy Speaker, that the opposition members that were on that Bill Committee did not say anything like the things they like to yeah. say in the Chamber today. They were constructive, and we all came together like a good Bill Committee should to try and make the best possible piece of legislation that they have. Now, speaking as somebody who likes to swim in the sea and have done since I was a kid, anybody else that grows up near the sea will remember, if they're truthful, that they will have swum past, I'm sorry to say, tampons, sanitary towels, actual faeces in the water. Now, this isn't just around Cornwall. This, I grew up in the northeast off Scarborough, and that was happening there as well. Uh, some of the surfers in, Scar in Cornwall, by the way, joke that in the 1970s they used to go to the toilet at the top of their village and then watch it come out through the sewage uh, when they got down to the bottom. And this is not a lie. This actually happened. So to say that this is a Tory sewage 
uh, crisis is absolutely ridiculous. This is a Torridge sewage solution that we are seeing. Because finally, we're actually grasping this and we are getting to the nub of the prob yeah. pro problem. So last October in uh, St Agnes, we saw a, uh, there, was a, uh, there was a big runoff. It made national headlines yeah. and it was videoed and it looked awful. And we learned, by the way, Madam Deputy Speaker, that that was um, actually runoff. Uh, now, we have to believe that because this is what South West Water say and this is what the Environment Agency say. But my constituents are convinced that it was more than that because uh, of the smell that they smelt. And so I would make one plea to the work that the Secretary of State is already doing. Can we have better testing and faster testing for these overflows when we're not sure how, what is happening? Because if we knew what was in the water, then we could have a more positive campaign by local authorities and water companies that say that actually this water is now safe to swim in. You are not going to get ill from this. And this is what I hope the work that we're doing now will lead to. South West Water is doing a lot of works around the foul. Uh, the Falmouth Treatment Works, amongst others, Old Hill, 24 North Parade, Prince of Wales Pier. 13.2 million is going to be spent by 2025 and 40 million by 2030. So South West Water, being a one-star company needing to get back to a four-star company, is starting to do the work. But I know that there is much more to do. And one final point, if I can, a plea to the Secretary of State, is that if we can, when the consultation has finished, make sure that fines that are um, imposed on water companies do go back into making sure that we can actually fix these problems. Problems that will help us along the way. Thank you, Madam Deputy yeah, Speaker. Yeah, yeah. Kat Smith. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And last year, in my Lancaster and Fleetwood constituency, there were 685 sewage spills, and the total duration of these spills uh, came to over 2,000 hours. So, needless to say, uh, my constituents have noticed. Um, I was recently contacted by 85 Year 5 pupils from Merside Primary School in Lancaster who are particularly concerned about pollution in Lake Windermere and the impact it's having on wildlife and the environment. And I want to give a voice to those youngest constituents of mine today. One pupil, Karina, says it feels like the lake is no longer a tranquil body of water, it's just a mass of raw, grotesque sewage. They inform me uh, that the Ambleside Sewage Treatment Works is built for 5,000 people, even though millions visit the area every single year. And they worry that the situation is getting worse and highlight that in 2016 there were around 100,000 hours of spills by the water companies in England, but yet by 2021 this had increased to 2.5 million. My constituents are troubled by the impact that the situation is having on local wildlife. They're especially troubled by the number of dead fish which have been seen in the area and the knock-on impact this will have on birds such as kingfishers. My young constituents are angry at the £600 million in profits made by United Utilities, which the peoples feel should be spent on addressing sewage spills in Lake Windermere. They do, however, accept that United Utilities are investing £40 million to try and address some of these problems, but as James from Year 5 prospectively highlights, intelligent people know that they could be investing a lot more, especially given their profits. And Anya says it's too little, too late. Very good. The pupils highlight that this does not only just affect animals. Yes, they're worried for their pets, especially the dogs that wade in uh, Lake Windermere, but also for the impact on people. Uh, Freya highlighted that innocent little children who go paddling in the sewage-filled lake could end up becoming sick and have diarrhoea, ending up going to hospital. And Evie asks, is it acceptable to put raw sewage into our lakes or should the government put a stop to it? My view is that government should put a stop to it and I would be grateful if the minister could answer Evie's question in her response. No one should have to worry about whether they're able to enjoy our areas of outstanding beauty if they're encountering raw sewage by taking a dip in our waters. No business should have to worry about Tory sanctioned sewage dumping impacting their trade. And if Tory MPs fail to support this motion today, they will be voting again to continue dumping sewage. And it is clear from the letters that I have received from over 80 children in my constituency that they can see that this would stink. Yeah. Tom Randall. Yeah. Um, Gedling's southern border is the River Trent between Colwick and Burton Joyce. It's popular with boaters, walkers, and fishermen. It's probably one of the prettiest parts of my constituency. And other parts, like uh, Gedling Village, which has the Ouse Dyke uh, running through it, uh, makes, it um, makes the places 
uh, great places to live. And uh, there is a legitimate public concern about the quality of the water in those places, and that is a concern that I share. Now, listening to some of the debate this afternoon, one might think that no sewage has ever been dumped in a river before uh, 2010, uh, which, of course, is not the case. Uh, the problems that we are dealing with are a legacy of a combined Victorian sewer system that carries both waste and surface runoff. Indeed, whilst uh, researching a completely unrelated um, subject recently, I came across an article in the Times from the 20th of April 1923, which contains the Ministry of Agriculture circular about pollution and goes on to say that, um, except in special uh, localities in this country, the most usual kind of pollution is sewage in bulk, so great that it deoxygenates water and suffocates fish. Fortunately, I think we've, our river quality has moved on quite a way since then, and certainly in Colic, just a couple of hundred yards beyond the boundary of my own constituency, they're building a new salmon fish pass because of the increased number of um, salmon in the River Trent, which is a popular, which is a good sign. But I do acknowledge uh, that there is a serious problem to solve. So I do welcome the storm overflow discharge reduction plan and the plan for water, which will deliver £56 billion of investment to reduce storm overflows, prosecute polluting water companies, introduce unlimited fines and increased and better monitoring. And I do understand there will be a concern about whether this is fast enough and there will be many who are feeling that it isn't. But government is about uh, difficult choices. Uh, we could stop storm overflows tomorrow by stopping the surface runoff, but I understand that doing so would cause 140,000 homes in the Southern Trent water region uh, to be liable to flooding, which would be an unacceptable uh, solution. Um, we have heard also this afternoon about introducing uncosted measures uh, which could triple the cost of a water bill, which, given the cost of living um, issues that we're facing at the moment, uh, would be equally unacceptable. So, Madam Mr. Speaker, I'm not prepared to back motions that will increase water bills at this difficult time or cause uh, these um, uh, unconscionable consequences, but we do have a detailed, costed plan which will make a difference to the quality of our water, and I say that we stick with it. Yeah. Navandu yeah. Mishra. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mr. Speaker. I wanted to start by uh, highlighting the powerful contributions made by Greater Manchester Neighbour uh, for, from Oldham, the Shadow Secretary of State, and the member for with insurance Ailey, who was sat behind me. Both of them highlighted important points that we face in Greater Manchester. According to Environment Agency data last year, United Utilities, the water company that covers the northwest of England, was the most polluting water company of them all. Despite that, the outgoing chief executive made £1.4 million in the, in the sale of shares in the business. This gets to the heart of the problem that without government holding private water companies to account with the existing legislation and creating new mechanisms to do so, they are rewarding catastrophic environmental damage. How is it the case that since privatisation, water bills have risen by 40%, yet £72 billion has gone to private water company shareholders? Indeed, much needed investment in infrastructure has fallen by 15%, and according to the Financial Times, English water companies leak about 20% of water supply compared with just 5% in Germany. And unlike United Utilities and Yorkshire Water alone, they were responsible for 124,000 sewage spills by, by water companies in England last year. That accounts for 40% of the number recorded. But the reality is that these private water companies are simply allowed to get away with it because of a combination of both lack of ambition and the deliberate defunding of the Environment Agency, as the Conservatives have done with other public bodies. I'm aware that in August last year, the Government published its Storm Overflows Discharge Reduction Plan in August, which requires water companies to reduce discharges into designated bathing water and high-priority nature sites. Yet there is one glaring omission. Where is the plan to eliminate sewage dumping into a natural environment? And why should my constituents and those of members across this House have to reach further into their pockets to cover rising bills when it is the rule-breaking bosses that should pay the price? Last year, River Mersey that runs through my constituency had waste dumped in it almost 1,000 times, triggering an inquiry from Stockport Council. And only last week it, it, it was reported that in Stockport Borough, plans to plant a new woodland have been cancelled after it was discovered that the field was so saturated with sewage the soil could be too toxic for the trees. In March, the Industry and Regulatory Committee reported on the water industry found that Ofwat and the Environment Agency must go further to hold water companies to account for environmental pollution through penalties and prosecution. It further stated that in order to do so, the government must ensure adequate funding is available, but that again is part of the problem. 
According to analysis by Trading in Prospect, the government's grant for environmental protection is currently 56% lower in real terms than it was in 2009-2010. And without that enforcement, water companies are allowed to self-report breaches of permits that allow them to release raw sewage in exceptional circumstances via storm overflows. But evidence suggests that water firms are responsible for 10 times more sewage dumping than they were disclosing. We have seen consistent rule breaking and increasing risk to public health and our leisure sites polluted and the undermining of both Ofwat and the Environment Agency. The Labour Party has a plan to tackle this head on. Why doesn't the government? Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Stephen Crabb. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I, I support ambitious targets for reducing sewage discharges. I support stronger regulation of the water companies. I support stricter enforcement and penalties for water companies found guilty of discharging sewage into our waterways. And that's why this afternoon I'll be supporting the government's very clear, very practical plan that sets us on a course for achieving all of those aims. Now, this is an, um, an issue, Madam Deputy Speaker, that really matters to me. It matters to my constituents in coastal Pembrokeshire. Uh, my constituency in 2021 had 79,000 hours of sewage discharged uh, during the course of the year. Completely unacceptable. It's an issue that local people in Pembrokeshire feel angry about. And as we've already heard this afternoon in the debate, the, who is responsible for uh, water policy in Wales, who is responsible for reducing these sewage discharges through legislation and, and regulation? It's Welsh Government yeah, yeah, through yeah. Natural Resources Wales. And it's dismaying to me, Madam Deputy Speaker, that this really important issue which should be tackled on a cross-party, pragmatic basis, has been reduced to, again, a political football this afternoon. And we know it's a political football because Labour have been briefing the media. I read in the newspaper this morning that this was part of a plan for their local election strategy. It's got nothing to do with tackling the environmental problems in our constituency. Yeah. It's a clever weave, at least they think it's clever, to help them get a few more votes at a local uh, election. And I think it does a huge disservice to those people, those campaigners in all of our constituencies who have taken the time to write to us and talk to us about these issues over, over recent years. And not just recent years. Surfers Against Sewage has, a, has had a presence in my constituency for 30 years. They've been talking about this for decades, and I think it is a really healthy thing that it's now right at the top of the political agenda, and I think it's down to the hard work of a lot of grassroots cam campaigners that we've got to this point. I won't go into too much detail, more detail about uh, the situation in Wales. Suffice to say, Madam Deputy Speaker, when we had the debate about this last year, when we were voting on this, Welsh Government, who are normally very keen that everyone should be aware of the issues and policy areas that they're responsible for, kept their heads way down. They didn't want people in Wales knowing that they have legislative responsibility for water policy in Wales. And so I wrote to the Minister, Madam Deputy Speaker, asking Welsh Government, what is the plan? We know what the plan is for, for England that UK Government are putting together. Where's the plan for Wales? I had a, le a letter back, Madam Deputy Speaker, saying that replacing all the existing CSOs would be a long-term, multi-billion pound project, be very carbon intensive and take many years. Instead, the Welsh Government is looking at nature-based solutions. They also say in their letter that they don't feel it's necessary to re replicate the approach being taken in England. And yet that's the bill in front of us this afternoon suggests that that is Labour policy. It isn't. We need a better approach to this. Yeah. Claudia Well. Madam Deputy Speaker, the water industry is a classic illustration of the harms of privatisation and the contradiction of a government that claims privatisation is more efficient while giving companies free reign to profit by damaging the environment. In 2021, 7 Trent Water, the water company in my constituency of Leicester East, was fined £1 million for a 2018 Royal Sewage uh, discharge that lasted four hours and 500000 for a separate incident. The previous year, the firm had been fined 800000 for similar issues. But by 2020 and 2021, 7 Trent Water discharged untreated sewage into our waterways and seas 60,000 times, with an average duration of almost 10 hours per incident. Despite this, the company boasted that it had received the government's highest four-star rating. Seven Trent's chief executive is now incredibly advising the government on water, waste discharges and biodiversity. At the same time as it pollutes, 
Seven Trent is paying out huge dividends to shareholders, including almost recently a payout of 43p per share on more than 250 54 million shares, more than 109 million to wealthy investors, and it pays out dividends twice a year. Seven Trent Water was only the third worst offender in England among water companies. According to the most recent DEFRA data, there were more than 370,000 sewage discharges a year, yet fines are rarely imposed. The foxes are running the chicken coop. The government describes Seven Trent's actions as completely unacceptable, yet is rewarding them for their recklessness. Madam Deputy Speaker, it is evident from these figures that the privatisation of the UK's water supply is a disaster for our people who pay a heavy price in financial terms and in quality of life and for nature and our environment. For everyone, in fact, except the water companies themselves and their investors who make millions while they pollute. It is clear the only real solution to this situation is full renationalisation so that those run-in services are accountable and any surpluses can drive reinvestment and lower bills instead of fattening corporate profits and offshore bank accounts. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Anthony Magnon. It's a pleasure to be able to speak in this debate because what the opposition have attempted to do is to pretend that this side of the House doesn't care about sewage. It doesn't care about water companies being held to account. And yet every instance in every debate with every measure that we have passed, we have shown that we care about the quality of water in our rivers and on our coastline. We have cared about bathing water status. And above all, we have cared about holding water companies to account. And this is not a moment to say, job done, well done, move on to the next issue. It is a continuing, rolling issue that we will have to address to ensure that we are providing the reassurance to constituents and that our constituents can have a reassurance of a, or they can have a reassured view of water companies. Because all the measures that we have done to date are exactly what the bill the opposition are proposing to uh, deliver today have put in place. For instance, they talk about dividend payments. Dividend payments are already being restricted by Ofwat's new measures. They talk about a new regulator, a costly thing to try and change, and yet we've given Ofwat the teeth to take action against water companies that fail to deliver. We've implemented the ability to put criminal fines and put directors and CEOs into jail if they do not deliver. We have also offered the opportunity to put unlimited fines on water companies under the polluter pays principle. They say we take no action and we prove a list of legislative deliverance, Madam Deputy Speaker, that is already in place, that is already being impacted and implemented across our respective constituencies. And we've also asked for a £56 billion investment that doesn't put the cost on our constituents at a time of difficulty, but it requires the water companies to take action. Again, a balanced approach that will see us deliver and clean up our waterways and ensure that we have better biodiversity and even more bathing water status. And then we come to the point about monitoring, Madam Deputy Speaker. It's extremely easy to pat yourself on the back in 2009 and 2010 when there were such limited monitoring systems across the United Kingdom. And yet now we have 90% monitoring, set to be 100% by the end of this year. And we can point to the problem and point to the solutions and show that we are delivering them, because that is exactly what this side of the House is doing. It's already been said by my friend in Cornwall, this is a Tory solution to the the sewage problem, and we should be proud of that. Madam Deputy Speaker, I have already taken South West Water to task and will continue to do so. They have a lot more to do to regain the confidence of the British public, especially in the South West. I have been taking them round to do town halls in Brixham. This Thursday I will be taking them into Totnes, I will let you know how I get on, um, to talk about what is being done in the local area to try and rebuild that confidence, to show the work is being done. But I have to say, when we politicise this issue, we do it at a detriment because there is a proud record to show. Jo Hopkins. Thank you. Madam Deputy Speaker, and we have the shameful situation where not one English river is classed as being in a healthy condition. None meet good chemical standards and few meet good ecological standards. And I know many colleagues' constituencies have been greatly impacted by the mismanagement of our waterways, but still, in Luton South, there were 12 spills totaling nine hours last year. 
And in Luton, we're particularly proud to have the River Lee, a chalk stream which rises in the neighbouring constituency of Luton North and flows all the way through Luton South and down ultimately to the River Thames. Chalk springs are pure, clear, constant water from underground chalk aquifers and springs. 85% of the world's chalk streams are in England and they are one of the planet's rarest habitats. And they are vulnerable to drought, we heard earlier, and illustrated by the 2019 drought, which dried out 67% of those in the Chilterns. So we do need to see government commit to protecting the future of chalk streams. But sadly, we know that the, gov the Conservative government record on water quality more widely is one of polluted waters and open spaces. Since 2016, there have been 1,276 years' worth of raw sewage dumped into British waters. And in 2022 alone, there were 824 sewage dumps a day across the country. And despite representing a landlocked constituency many miles from the sea, I know how important our coast is to many in our Luton community. Not everyone has the means to holiday abroad, and for many families, a trip to the seaside is the highlight of their summer. Every child deserves to be able to enjoy playing on the beach, paddling in the sea, safe from harm. So the government cannot shirk responsibility for this failure. During the passage of the Environment Act, Conservative MPs had the opportunity to support a Labour-backed amendment that would have brought an end to sewage dumping. However, instead of putting the country and our communities first, Conservative MPs walked through the voting lobbies to block these changes and voted to continue the Tory sewage scandal. This is despite the consequences for our environment, for public health and for businesses that rely on the beauty and nature of Britain to attract visitors and thrive. But not only have the Conservatives given the green light for water companies to dump sewage and neglect our vital water infrastructure, they've also rewarded them for it. Shareholders are walking away with billions in dividends and with bumper bonuses for negligent water bosses. 13 years of Tory government has taken our country backwards, allowing it to be treated like an open sewer. So I urge all members to support Labour's water quality bill, particularly those saying that it's already happening, then back the bill. Yeah. Basically, we need these four crucial reduction measures at no extra burden on household bills. But I fear that yet again we'll see Tory members walk through the other lobby to block these changes and continue the Tory sewage scandal. Sally Ann Hart. People of Hastings, as a beautiful Hastings and Rye, who are all quite rightly angry about the extent of water companies' excessive use of overflows, only the Conservatives have come up with a proper, fully costed plan. And I'm proud of this and support the work of this government is doing to deal with this issue and the work that I do, engaging with Southern Water and my constituents to improve water quality and resources locally and reduce sewage flooding. But, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm somewhat bemused that the opposition has tabled this debate today. They are way behind the narrative in trying to secure targets for sewage discharges and protect water quality. I want to express my deep disappointment with Labour and its leadership. I thought the days of momentum and its dirty, dangerous and polarising politics had disappeared with the election of a leader who, from the outset, seemed to be a person with a plan with integrity, but recent weeks in particular have shown that Corbynism and momentum politics have not disappeared. We have seen personal misinformed attacks on the Prime Minister. We have seen personal misinformed attacks on many Conservative MPs about sewage discharges to the extent that many colleagues live in fear for themselves and their families. I thought, Madam Deputy Speaker, that we were all trying to work together no, no, no. to bring the political debate no, back no. into more polite, constructive and sensible discourse to re help reduce the horrendous abuse that many MPs struggle with on a daily basis. I was wrong. Just this morning, I read an article in The Guardian, Labour to use tactic that finished off trust to force Tories into sewage vote. I spread on social media by opposition supporters, including a former pop star who has a newfound fame by attacking Conservative MPs about a subject they all seem to know little about. This is all about politicking for Labour. Their tactics smack of desperation. They do not care about sewage issues because if they did, 
Wales under Labour-controlled Senate would have a world-class water and sewage system. It does not. Yeah. Labour has been responsible in Wales for 23 years, and it's almost twice the amount of sewage discharges yeah. than in England. Why? Madam Deputy Speaker, Why? this Conservative government Why? is the first UK government to instruct water companies to prioritise the environment, both by imposing new legal duties on water companies under our landmark Environment Act and by giving new powers to off what. This is the government that will sort out water companies, and I stand by the measures this government takes. Yeah. 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 Raw sewage is the perfect metaphor for 13 years of Tory Britain. It's hard to find an NHS dentist or get a GP appointment. It's hard to get a passport or find a lettuce or a tomato in a supermarket, but you can go for a swim amongst human waste, faeces, nappies and used condoms in our lakes, rivers and seas. Britain deserves so much better than this. There are more than 37,000 sewage spills in the South West last year. In Plymouth alone, there are more than 2,000, an average of five spills every single day. That means, Madam Deputy Speaker, it's only 1,220 sewage spills until Christmas for us Janners to look forward to. So why has South West Water been let off the hook they are failing as a company to close down the raw sewage outlets that we need them to close to have a protected and safe region. In Plymouth, Sutton and Devonport, 8,750 hours of dumping from 1,574 spills. In Plymouth, Moorview, 4,000 hours from 540 spills. More in South West Devon, more in Torridge and West Devon, whose rivers flow past Plymouth. This is not good enough. Clean water matters to me. It matters to me when I spoke from the front bench. It matters to me where I speak now. In 2017, I proposed that Plymouth Sound be designated as the UK's first ever national marine park. In 2019, we achieved that status, and thanks to £10 million of Heritage Lottery Fund money, we're improving access to the water, celebrating Plymouth's maritime history and cleaning up our waters. Mm. And for the past year, I've been campaigning for Devil's Point and Firestone Bay to be designated as an official bathing water with regular water testing, so people like me who swim in that part of Plymouth Sound can see what we're swimming in. I'm grateful for ministers for agreeing to the campaign, and that status starts in only a few weeks' time. The truth is, ending the sewage scandal is in the government's hands. They can mandate investment in, uh, in closing raw sewage outlets in water company business plans. They can introduce automatic fines for sewage jumping. They can introduce mandatory monitoring for all sewage outlets and make sure each one of those monitors is working. They can introduce legally binding targets to end 90% of raw sewage discharges by 2030, and they can prioritise river and sewage in the next set of business plans. But they can do more. They could introduce more stormwater retention tanks, more automatic fines uh, and real-term data so we can see what's happening. And they can close the gap between a spill and a fine that takes many, many years to deliver. I would also like to see more of that money that is fine go to improve our environment. Higher levels fines nearly all go to the Treasury. We need more going to our environment to improve it along the way. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. Dr Ben Spencer. Madam Deputy Speaker, I think we can all agree um, that sewage flooding is revolting, and few people know this more than my constituents in Thorpe, who have already experienced it twice um, in their gardens and home this year. Um, yet what Labour and the Lib Dems fail to mention is that if we were to simply click our fingers and ban sewage overflows into rivers, the result would be many more households experiencing sewage flooding as it backed up into their homes at a time of flooding or heavy rainfall. No one wants sewage overflowing into our rivers either, and it's clear that there's been a lack of investment in sewage infrastructure over decades which has led to this situation. But rather than knee-jerk reactions and costed plans aimed at political campaigning and PR, we believe in working towards long-term solutions to protect our rivers. That's why we passed the Environment Act, which introduced new targets, measures to require water companies to take action. That's why we're legislating to enshrine these targets into law, ensuring they're deliverable and cost-effective for bill payers. That's why I work closely with Thames Water and the Environment Agency to address flooding and water quality issues in Runnymede and Weybridge. It's why I press for infrastructure investment to prioritise high-use areas 
um, such as mine, so that we can deliver improvements to the maximum number of people as soon as possible. It's why I visited local sewage treatment works and pressed for modernisation that will reduce local sewage overflows. And it's why I support the 500 million, of which 250 million coming from the government, 250 from Surrey County Council, um, money going towards the Retem scheme that will protect thousands of homes and businesses locally from flooding. And it's why I will continue to campaign for practical, affordable solutions based on the needs and experiences of residents in Rennie Mead and Weybridge. Opposition proposals during the passage of the Environment Act would have cost between 150 and 600 billion, and even then, achieving the improvements that were being promised may have proven impossible. Do they really believe that headlines today is worth thousands of pounds in household bills each year? Do they really want to stop overflows and instead flood people's homes? Or will they finally put sound financial planning? sustainability and affordability above spin and support our plans to improve water quality without the awful consequences for residents that their plans would cause. Rebecca Long Bailey. Thank you Madam yeah. Deputy Speaker. According to the Rivers Trust, in Salford alone our waterways have been littered with thousands of hours worth of sewage discharges in 2022 and it will take more than the government's fluffy and toothless targets to fix the problem. Indeed the water industry has already been regulated since it was privatised in 1989 and fining many water companies millions of pounds has demonstrably not affected their behaviour. Certain water companies have actually tried to claim in court that they're not public authorities and shouldn't have to publish data on sewage and years of chronic underfunding of the Environment Agency and inaction by the regulator Ofwat has meant that there's been an inability to enforce even the menial regulation that's available to us in this country. Indeed, it's left to individuals themselves and organisations to try and enforce, but even when they do, they're met with hurdles. Indeed, United Utilities sought a declaration that would effectively bar people from bringing private claims against water companies that dump sewage into rivers and seas, and United Utilities won a case in the Court of Appeal um, most recently. And this has meant that any water company can effectively dump sewage into waterways in England and Wales without fear of being sued in the civil courts by landowners, angling clubs, swimming clubs, wildlife groups, residents and any other groups with an interest in the land. So action is needed and my honourable friend's plan is a sensible and effective one and I hope that the whole house supports his motion today but beyond this I'd urge all colleagues to examine the bigger picture as to why we're actually in the situation we are today and how we can actually ensure long-term sustainability of the water sector. Privatisation has meant that water bills have increased by 40% in real terms. We've seen £72 billion paid out in dividends to shareholders since privatisation and that's almost half as much as the money that they've spent on upgrading and maintaining water and sewerage systems. And you know the galling fact is, is that the private sector paid very little for these companies when they took them on in 1989. And the truth is, is that privatisation of our water industry was wrong. It's been a complete failure for the British public. So if we're serious about tackling this ecological disaster, we do need to support the opposition's motion today. But ultimately, we need to have a serious discussion about bringing our water industry into public ownership for the public good. Gagan Mohindra. Madam Deputy Speaker, I've previously spoken in this House about my beautiful constituency of South West Hertfordshire. We have the River Chess, uh, the Aquadrome and the Grand Union Canal and, and we're very fortunate that the beautiful waterways we have in the constituency. I've had many constituents contact me about this particular issue. Um, I know that uh, politics being politics, the opposition have used this as a bit of a political football. Uh, members on this side will remember the uh, Duke of Wellington <coughs> amendment and how we were pillarized for actually doing what we thought was best by not agreeing with bankrupting water companies up and down the country, but actually supporting a plan that was viable. Um, it's incumbent on all of us in this place to make sure that any laws that we create are enforceable and actually implementable. 
Uh, more locally in South West Hertfordshire, uh, I've held regular meetings with Thames Water and I know the government has fined them extensively for their discharge of sewage, over 35 million between 2010 and 2023. Uh, I continue to have make visits uh, both within Maple Lodge sewage treatment works but also Aylesbury, uh, which feeds into my constituency. My residents are rightly angry. Uh, they look at this issue at a glance with the headlines and it's easy to understand why. The Victorian drainage system, as many colleagues have mentioned, is one of the key aspects that we need to, to sort out. But uh, as my honourable friend uh, said earlier, the reason why we allow discharge in the first place is to prevent discharge being coming up through people's toilets and into their homes, because that is even worse than unfortunately the damage caused by discharge into our rivers. We need to upgrade the waterways. We will do so. We have a viable water plan put forward by this government, uh, who I continue to fully support, because actually the alternative, as proposed by Labour at the time, was uh, a £21,000 bill per household. The second debate today is on the cost of uh, living. Uh, and it's, I know that the Secretary of State, when she was in her place, referred to the hypocrisy, or the, it being ironic, that on the one hand we're talking about increasing household bills and then later on today we'll be discussing how to actually support our residents. We must continue to be honest with our constituents. We need to be bearers unfortunately sometimes of bad news but we've also got to be transparent. So saying actually these are the things realistically that we can implement in my eyes is what we should be doing. And this plan, the water plan put forward by the government is very much that. I know that the opposition have spoken about the increase in recording or the uh, number of uh, sewage releases, but a lot of that is down to the increase in better recording. Um, we shouldn't shy away from the fact that we've got better data. I will finish there, Madam Deputy Speaker, because I am conscious of time, but thank you for allowing me to speak, and I'll continue to support my residents on this really important issue. Paula Barker. Thank yeah. you, Madam Deputy Speaker. The River Mersey in the Grace uh, Greater North West England is a meandering through the heart of the region and connecting the great cities of Manchester and Liverpool and for centuries was the boundary between the historic counties of Lancashire and Cheshire. Yeah, yeah. I pay tribute to the likes of the Mersey Rivers Trust who have done so much for so long in the fight to clean up the Mersey. In our part of the world we take our obligations to look after the Mersey extremely seriously. And recently, our Metro Mayor, Steve Rotherham, announced plans to make the river sewage free by 2030. These plans were backed by Lord Heseltine, who helped first establish the Mersey Basin Campaign Partnership nearly 40 years ago. They both recognise that when it comes to the Mersey, there is no room for complacency. Growing up in Liverpool, my generation and the one before it saw the toll taken on the river and its estuary. Yet this bold action set out by our Metro Mayor risks being undermined by the government benches if they do not urgently get a grip of the issue of sewage being dumped time and time again into our waterways. The excellent reporting from Danny Rigg at the Liverpool Echo has stated the scale of this problem. Sewage flowed into Merseyside rivers for more than 17,000 hours from 10 wastewater treatment sites in 2020 and raw sewage flowed into the river for 11,000 hours from just the five rural locations upstream of New Brighton in 2021. And it was remarked on by the reporter that this was more than the actual number of hours in the entire year. Madam Deputy Speaker, this modern Conservative Party might not value our natural habitats, our precious waterways and our coastal communities, but the British people do. After all, it was this Conservative Party that went out of their way to block Labour amendments to the Environment Act that would have brought an end to this practice. Rather than stand by communities, they stood idly by, letting shareholders walk away with billions in dividends and bumper bonuses for water bosses. The government benches were belligerent in striking down the opposition's amendment. Yes, here we are. The Secretary of State, now late to the party, no doubt after her inbox and that of MPs opposite filling up with emails from angry constituents wondering why they have consistently refused to stand up for them. Too little, too late. 
I am proud that cleaning up our waterways, our rivers and seas, taking on the water companies for their negligence and supporting our people is a priority for this opposition, and it is something we will take action on in Government. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Madam Deputy Speaker, I am perplexed as to why we need another bill on this topic, a particularly one that's uncosted and would result in a threefold increase in water bills when we have this epic Environment Act already here. Um, what we really need to do is to implement what is in the Act. And whilst I fully accept there is far more that needs to be done, particularly running into our rivers, I think we also need to acknowledge where progress has been made, particularly when our vital tourism economy is so reliant on the quality of our water. Yeah. South West Water is responsible for 34% of all of our bathing waters and for 10 million visitors to that region. 100% of those bathing waters are now at bathing water quality. That's up 90, from 90% 90 in 2010. In my beautiful North Devon constituency, I have nine designated bathing waters, all of which are good or excellent. We have already seen a 50% reduction in bathing season storm overflows, a 75% reduction in the duration of spills. The investment by South West Water into the fantastic surf beach of Croyd has now seen their bathing water quality rise from good to excellent. Anyone familiar with North Devon's beautiful beaches knows how much better water quality is now compared to 20 to 30 years ago. Only 1% of the water pollution we are dealing with is sewage. Over 95% of our storm overflow discharge is rainwater. Anyone watching the new South West Waters WaterFit Live app will note that the overflows run after extensive rain, which is completely different to raw sewage being dumped on the beaches, particularly when the alternative is that that gets washed up into people's front rooms. And it's only because we're now monitoring the situation that we actually know what is going on. The crystal clear waters of North Devon are beckoning. The first cold water surf reserve in the world, the first UNESCO biosphere, we pride ourselves on our waters. Indeed, come wild swimming in my patch, you will see dolphins playing. You might indeed see mermaid perches on the beach, where actually the sharks do go past. It is pretty wild out there. We have jellyfishes, we have ones the size of dustbin lids, and with the changing climate, we occasionally get ones that sting you as well these days. We have seals that like to actually play with the gig rowers because the oars flapping in the water, they actually jump up to see you. And yep, they're a bit hairier than my normal surf companion when I caught one out on the beach. I will be back in my waters this weekend, and I'm proud to be so. And I hope if you haven't yet booked your summer holiday, you'll consider coming to Croyd, because on Friday, the opposition spoke about the need to ensure people can access our beaches. I was proud to be at the opening of the country's first adaptive surf centre, and now everyone can access that beach and its excellent water company. Matt Bronner. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and it's a pleasure to be able to speak in this afternoon's debate. Uh, before I start, I would also like to thank the Angling Trust, Surfers Against Sewage, obviously paying tribute to uh, their work in coastal areas and inland, and many other groups who are campaigning on this very important issue. And I would like to take this opportunity to talk about a really unpleasant incident which happened in my constituency and in neighbouring parts of Berkshire, which unfortunately illustrates the scale of the problem and the nature of what we're dealing with, and indeed the need for urgent action, far more so than has been committed to by the government. Uh, recently, earlier this month, there was a spill which lasted for 17 hours into a local brook called Foundry Brook, sometimes known as Foundry Brook, um, which feeds into the River Kennet, which is one of the main tributaries of the Thames, and ultimately the sewage spill would have fed into the Thames at Reading and then obviously onward to London. Um, and this happened in a beautiful rural setting, rolling countryside just outside Reading, um, and then past the town, the, the, west, sorry, the uh, western edge of the town, past the nature reserve, uh, through areas where there are people uh, living nearby with their backs of their gardens going down to the river, next to workplaces, uh, right next to Green Park, which is a major uh, science park um, in, in our area with thousands of employees who like to walk past the waterways, uh, also carrying on into the Kennet, past um, County Lock, into Reading Town Centre, through the area where the Oracle Shopping Centre is, and on past more terraced housing and more flats to Kennet Mouth, where the Kennet joins the Thames. Now, ultimately, this dreadful slick would have continued through uh, the rest of the Thames Valley, ultimately to the sea. 
That is an appalling abuse and one which residents and people working nearby should not have to put up with. And it simply is not acceptable that this type of pollution takes place in the 21st century. And I have to say that I was near to Foundry Brook um, a few weeks ago. It may have been at the time of this incident or slightly before um, when I was getting ready to run the Reading Half Marathon. And I could see the water and smell the water and it really was unpleasant. I think that's a polite way to put it. It really was deeply unpleasant. There was an awful smell. There was a strange tinge to the water. It didn't look natural, it didn't look right. Despite the setting with beautiful uh, willow trees pollarded like something out of wind in the willows next to the waterway. And that's what we're talking about. Disgusting pollution and there should be urgent action to tackle it. And this is just one example. In one community, um, I thought the Honourable Lady from North Devon spoke beautifully about her coastal community. Inland we also have wonderful, beautiful waterways that are full of wildlife, large, bird, uh, large birds such as swans and smaller ducks and, and other uh, animals and, and large fish like pike and a range of other fish, animals as well. All of this is being affected and people's enjoyment by these terrible sewage incidents and they simply should not be happening. And it's happening around the country. We've had a range of constituencies referenced this afternoon. It simply shouldn't be continuing. And I do think there is need for urgent action now. There needs to be a proper plan with automatic fines. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Simon Baines. Madam Yay. Deputy Speaker, we, I have been um, serving on the Welsh Affairs Committee and we have had two evident sessions um, discussing the situation with regard to water companies in Wales. So I've spent a great deal of time recently hearing what is going on in Wales. And frankly, this afternoon, there seems to be virtually no recognition from the opposition benches that the Labour Party has a big problem to answer in Wales when it comes to the, to the issue of water quality. And we have established during the course of this debate that the Welsh Government has legislative competence in relation to all aspects of water quality, water resources and water industry. So it is very much the Labour Party's responsibility in Wales. I thought that the um, contribution by the Honourable Member for Islwyn was, was very powerful mm -hmm. and it was holding to account the problems with Dua Cymru or Welsh water. And one of the points that's been made continuously by the opposition benches, it perhaps goes down um, slightly different lines, um, whether they're Momentum or mainstream Labour members, but the point about nationalisation, in effect, Dua Cymru, it's a not-for-profit organisation, so it is not putting money into the hands of shareholders, yet, as the Honourable Member for Islwyn said, it is a very, very poor performer. So I think that is something that the opposition need to consider. But during the course of the Welsh Affairs um, review of the water industry in Wales, we were very concerned by the evidence we heard about the condition of Welsh rivers and coastal waters. And I make no apology for highlighting Labour's appalling performance in Wales on the water industry. And I'll give one or two statistics in the time that is allowed. In, there were 83,000 spills in Wales in 2022. Now, if we look at those compared to England, in England there were 23 average spills per overflow per year, whereas in Wales it's 38 average spills per overflow per year. So it is a distinctly poorer performance in Wales. The number of sewage spills in Wales accounted for 20, 21% of all discharges across Wales and England. And the top two longest sewage discharges last year were in Wales, in Bridge End, responsibility of Dua Cymru or Welsh Water. And as we have heard, of the top five constituencies across the UK for hours of sewage discharge, three are in Wales, Carmarthen, Eastern Dinevor, Dwyfo Merionith and Priscelli Pembrokeshire. These are damning statistics. And the point I'd like to make to the opposition is that they should be honest enough to recognise that there is a major problem in the way that Labour run the water industry in Wales. Yeah. 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 Andrew Gwynn. 
Thank you. It will come as no surprise to uh, members in the chamber that I rise to support uh, the Labour front bench in their motion today, uh, because I support the bill uh, that has been tabled by my honourable friend, the Shadow Secretary of State. Madam Deputy Speaker, the River, Tr River Tame, which runs through my constituency, has the unfortunate honour of being one of the most polluted waterways in the UK. In detailed, peer-reviewed research, Professor Jamie Woodward and his team from the University of Manchester found that the Tame, which is one of two tributaries forming the River Mersey at Stockport, uh, is heavily contaminated with microplastics because untreated wastewater and sewage is routinely discharged into the river when it's at low flow. Professor Woodward found concentrations of 130,000 microplastic particles per sediment on the riverbed around Denton. This, in one of the f this is one of the few accessible green spaces in my constituency, and it is absolutely disgraceful. In 2022, there were 11,000 hours of sewage discharged into the River Tame and the local environment by United Utilities. That pollution, and also the pollution from industrial processes along the river, uh, is having a disastrous impact on the local environment. And in a recent interview with Paul Whitehouse on the BBC, Chris Clark, an angler who works closely with the Friends of the Tame Valley, told of his devastation as he watched raw sewage, not from a UU plant, but from a misconnection into Johnson Brook, um, being pumped into the waterway on the same day that the Environment Agency was replenishing fish stocks. Now, local people across my constituency are doing their very best to try and solve this problem. Groups like the Friends of the Tame Valley, which I'm incredibly proud to be a part of, often organise community river bank, bank cleans, but all too often it feels like they are fighting an uphill battle. There has always been, uh, all, all, there has also been the formation of the River Tame Working Group, spearheaded by the Mersey Rivers Trust. This brings various community and corporate stakeholders, including United Utilities, together to resolve the local operational issues and to help shape local catchment action plans. Now, in the interest of balance, you, you are investing £100 million of investment to immediately commence a further programme of works to reduce spill frequency at eight prioritised storm overflows. There are four river rangers and we are training a generation of river guardians. But, Madam Deputy Speaker, in closing, in 2010, when the Tory Prime Minister said we're all in it together, I'm sure after 13 years he didn't think we meant sewage in our rivers. James Wilde. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Deputy yeah. Speaker. and I'm pleased to speak in this debate to make clear again that the use of storm overflows is unacceptable and needs to end which is why I supported the Environment Act and new powers to require water companies to tackle this issue and for Ofwat to act, including where water companies seek to pay dividends where their environmental performance is not good enough. Now, North West Norfolk is home to many precious chalk streams, and one of my first visits as an MP was to walk the River Noir in Castle Acre with the Norfolk Rivers Trust, where we looked at work to restore part of the river to get it back to the natural whips, depths and gradients and as a member of the All Party Chalkstream group, I've consistently highlighted the unacceptable use of storm overflows and the need to protect these rivers. But let's be candid about what ending the use of overflows would mean that some pretend is possible. It would mean sewage backing up into people's homes. Mm. Why don't Labour and the Liberal Democrats put that on their leaflets? Yeah. Why aren't they open with the public about the disgusting consequences of the proposals they put forward? So rather than misleading claims, I'm interested in practical action to make a difference. That starts with overflows. And looking at the motion, I wonder where Labour have been. We will have 100% of overflows monitored by the end of this year, with real-time data coming. When they were last in government, that figure was 7%. Then there are fines and prosecutions. Yeah. Having looked at this area as a <coughs> member of the Public Accounts Committee, I want to see the Environment Agency take far more robust action. All major water companies are under investigation for illegal sewage discharges, and regulators must use higher fines to focus the minds of chief executives and boards, which is why I support unlimited fines. The third element is investment, 
There's no cheap way to fix a Victorian system combining rainwater and wastewater. In my northwest Norfolk constituency, residents suffered sewage coming up through manhole covers and into their homes when there was severe flooding. By challenging Anglian Water, I got them to reline some of the sewer network because there was groundwater infiltration rather than just inundation of rainwater. And as a result, we will see improvements and hopefully won't see a re repetition. But we need to see major investment, and that's why the £56 billion is going to be required. And the motion calls for an impact assessment. Well, that's been done as required by the Environment Act, and the results aren't good for either party. Liberal Democrats pretend they can solve this problem overnight, but that's just wholly impractical. Yeah. And Labour plan appears to involve spending £600 billion in seven years. As my constituents would say, what a load of squit. <laughs> Instead, the Conservative Party has the plan for 100% monitoring, yeah. requiring record investment and using penalties to tackle this problem. Now, water companies and regulators must be held to account to deliver real improvements <coughs> for our constituents. Yeah. 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 Matt Western. Yeah. Madam yeah. Deputy yeah. Speaker, and it's a pleasure to follow the member for North West uh, Norfolk. Um, the, let me just start with some facts here. In the year 2021, we saw a 67% increase in sewage discharges in my constituency of Warwick and Leamington across the two rivers of the River Lem and the River Avon. Of course, these are discharges that are sanctioned uh, by this uh, government. We know and we've heard that there are discharges now every two and a half uh, minutes. Now, let's also remember that the Conservative government voted against the Duke of Wellington's amendment, amendment number 45 to the Environment Bill, which would have put a new duty on sewerage undertakers to, imp to improvements to the sewerage systems to, and to demonstrate progressive uh, reductions in the harm caused by discharges of untreated sewage. Now, uh, I, I find or we find ourselves, uh, what is it, a year on, nothing has changed. The public are extremely disgusted by what they see and hear. In 2022, we had 824 sewage dumps a day across the country. Uh, meanwhile, we have billions being paid out in dividends, as we've heard. CEO pay increasing at 25, 27 per cent locally uh, to Seven Trent Chief Executive. And we're seeing that not enough is being invested, invested in the network, in suds, uh, in grey water storage. And one, one of the great hits uh, to the problem we have uh, is, is, was the, the change in the legislation uh, over new builds, new housing, and the, the problems we have with rainwater runoff, uh, rather than improving the storage on those new developments. Now, what I'm seeing is the real concerns and hearing from uh, the community. I've had 52 letters from the public uh, just in recent months, uh, concerns from the leisure uh, users, such as Warwick Sea Scouts, uh, Leamington Canoe Club, the Warwick Boat Club, uh, which has uh, rowing teams using uh, the lengths of the rivers, but also businesses such as Warwick Boat or Leamington Boat Centre, who I contacted and who told me they're really concerned about the damage to the ecosystem of the river, but also really concerned about public health. But of course, this, Madam Deputy Speaker, does have an impact on those businesses. And let us not forget that this also impacts on the wildlife, and we're, there's a desperate need to take remedial action uh, and focus on river ecology to protect and preserve plant and animal life. That is why Labour's plan would impose automatic fines, set legal requirements uh, for monitoring uh, stations throughout our rivers, and set legally binding targets. Madam Deputy Speaker, after 13 years, it really is clear the government has failed our rivers, our canals and our beaches. It is a government that is out of touch with public opinion, and that is why this motion is important and why I'll be voting for it. Yeah, yeah. Lee Anderson. Thank you, Madam yeah, Deputy Speaker. Yeah, yeah. Now then, a, um, another pointless debate from a pointless opposition. That's what I'm thinking today. Now, the last time they did this, obviously, they were telling people that we were voting to dump sewage into, into our waterways, and that was absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. And as a result of that, we had malicious communications, we had threats, we had some real nastiness. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, the party of kinder, gentler politics should, uh, should take notes. But they won't. They won't. But listen, but listen, 
Why would anybody vote to dump sewage in waterways? It's absolute nonsense. Nobody has ever done that. My friends, my family, we all use our waterways, we use our seas, we use our beaches, we use our rivers. It's just not true. It's a complete lie. And you should hang, sorry, Madam Lipstick, they should hang their heads in shame. But it's important that we put the facts out rather than score cheap political points. I'm not in. I'm not into this divisive dog whistle politics which, which you portray. It's absolute nonsense. Look, storm overflows. Storm overflows. Even they're laughing. Storm over overflows, what are they? These are, this is a system, this is a relief valve, so when we have a heavy downpour of rain, that the sewage doesn't back up and go onto the streets or go, go back into people's houses. Yeah, 13 years. I keep saying 13 years, but the Labour Party was in power for 13 years, yeah. and they keep talking about these levers that they're going to pull. These levers, 13 years, and did absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. They should be ashamed. A bunch of hypocrites, the lot of them, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. So the water companies, they have to sometimes use these overflows. It's not ideal, not always acceptable. This bill that we introduced, that changes it, the Act changes it, and we're acting on it, and we're doing more more than the Labour Party ever did in their 13 years. But like all their silly ideas, the Labour Party have no real plan. It's just, it's just it's dog whistle politics, as I said before. In this great city, we have the, the Thames Tideway Tunnel, and that's currently under construction. I come to my sense, somebody's from a chuntering position, somebody's chuntering from a sense position saying I was once a, a member of the Labour Party, I was, but uh, you know, uh, I woke up, I, I, you know, I'd, um, my census came back and then I was elected to the Conservative yeah, MP yeah, yeah, in Ashford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that shut the lot on all that day. So this, uh, this um, Thames Tidewell Tunnel, five billion quid it's going to cost. It's going to take ten years to complete. But if that lot had run their way, what, what they'd have done, you know, we'd have seen sewage backing into the streets yep. for ten yeah. years, yeah. backing into people's houses for ten years. And the, the great British public aren't stupid. They get it. And just like our ageing Victorian sewers, they are full of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mr Ford. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I would like to tell a tale of two announcements. Uh, we are used to re-announcements where the government uses much fanfare to introduce funding which it later emerges they have announced before. But I want to describe something that is new to me, an announcement with two faces. On the 7th of April, the Sidmouth Herald quoted a government press release. This week, the Water Minister, the Honourable Member for Taunton Dean, confirmed £70 million of cash will be used to improve sewage systems in Sidmouth, Tipton St John and Axminster, as well as Falmouth and Cornwall. East Devon's share of the cash will help prevent sewage overflows in Sidmouth, Tipton St John, as well as water pollution in Axminster. So, on the surface, this is welcome, £70 million to improve sewage systems in East Devon. Those reading this in the paper in Devon are led to believe that this relates to our area and might miss the passing reference to a distant town in Cornwall. But readers in my part of Devon are discerning, and they notice a mention of Cornwall in a story that is supposed to be about Devon. So to get the full picture of what is going on here, you need to travel 125 miles southeast of Axminster and read the same announcement in Falmouth's local newspaper, The Packet. What does the Conservative government's announcement claim in Falmouth? I quote, South West Water's total investment for the Falmouth area includes a total of £40 million. So by reading the same announcement in the neighbouring county, we find that most of the £70 million of funding is not for East Devon, at all. I, for one, will never defer to the interests of these polluting water firms or simply parrot the lines that they suggest we MPs might like to use. Instead, I will always stand up for my constituents who are seeing their bills rise, profits leaking out in bonuses, and all while sewage poisons our rivers and beaches. Thank you. Thank you very much. Angela Richardson. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, um, Mr Deputy Speaker. Across the country, our beaches and rivers, including the way navigation, are vital for the health and well-being of our communities. Like all my Guildford constituents, I know how important it is to make sure that our natural assets should be preserved, not least because every summer I swim in our waters. It was this Conservative government that introduced new duties on water companies to monitor the water quality 
upstream and downstream of storm overflows and sewage disposal works. It is this government that is working towards increasing monitoring to 100% of storm overflows by the end of this year. And it was under this government last year that fines reached a record level where breaches were found. But government alone cannot fix each and every leak, each and every unfortunate discharge event. This is why I welcome that the government is incentivising water companies to invest more than £7 billion by 2025 on environmental <coughs> improvements while protecting people's water bills. And I welcome the millions of pounds being invested by Thames Water in my constituency. This is a very complex issue which needs the keen attention of government, yeah. which looks out not only for our waterways and beaches, but also for our constituents, unlike Labour and the Liberal Democrats, who have put forward ridiculous plans which would cost up to £593 billion pounds, or £21,000 per household. When it comes to sorting this messy situation out, it is this Conservative government that is taking action. It is the Labour Party that allowed people to pay more while the sewage freely flowed into our waterways and the water companies went unchecked. I would just gently say to the opposition, this politically motivated, politically timed debate today on a highly emotive subject is not a neutral act. It overflows beyond this chamber as myself and other colleagues on the side who have had to have police come to our homes and offices to make sure that we are safe as a result of misinformation yeah, on sewage. No, it has Stem, impacted our families and our staff. It, it, is, not it is important that my Ballers. Guildford constituents Ballers. have Ballers. the facts, Ballers. not fear mongering. Bob Seeley. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Deputy Speaker. Have you finished? You done? Do you want to intervene? OK. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Mr Deputy Speaker. Apart from the relentless nastiness from the nasty party opposite, we did actually find out some really interesting facts today. Maybe they can explain some of them when he does his round-up. There was literally no water monitoring under Labour. Why? There must have been mass dumping, but we don't know about it. Why? Because they hid the problem, because they didn't monitor. Secondly, this is the one that gets me most of all, Mr Deputy Speaker. The utility firms that these class warriors profess to hate, they had a sweetheart deal with them that allowed them to self-monitor. What a corrupting relationship between New Labour and the big utility yeah. firms. Why were they allowed to self-monitor? And grinning at me inanely doesn't answer the question. Thirdly... They were actually taken to court by their lovely buddies in the European Union. You could not make it up. Anyway, under our, and I thank the Secretary of State for her measured, I'm trying to be measured, I, probably not doing a very good job of it, I must admit. The Secretary of State, I thank her for her calm and measured sentiments as opposed to the nonsense that we've heard from the party opposite. On the Isle of Wight, thanks to this government, Southern Water are now investing tens of millions. And I persuaded Southern Water to make the Isle of Wight an example of best practice. So we have tens of millions of investments, Sandown Waterworks, two and a half million for Knighton, five million in Carisbrook, seven million for works in Newport, in Cowes and in Braiding. And the full list is extensive. And I'm encouraging all islanders who get the offer of a free water butt, <coughs> excuse me, a free water butt from Southern Water to take up this option. Because as well as improving the pumping stations, as well as re-plumbing parts of the drainage system, we are providing slow-release water butts and redesigning road surfaces. So the improvements that we're making as a pilot scheme, as an example of national best practice today on the island, is going to get rolled out everywhere else as part of the integrated water plan, as part of the integrated sewage plan, as in part of all the good things that are happening into the environment bill. Yes, please. Thank you. Southern Water is doing on the Isle of Wight, um, Mr Deputy Speaker, and I'm really grateful because we've got a Fairlight pathway in my patch and they're going to be rolling out smart water butts that slow down the water surface runoff and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that works in my patch. I, I, I thank my honourable friend so much for the intervention. Uh, community schemes are a small part of this because people write to me and say, well, what can a community scheme do? And you're right, there's major investment that has to happen. But the one scheme, the first pilot scheme in Britain, happened in a beautiful little village called Haven Street in, in my patch. Last year, Haven Street pumping station spilt 
on average 30 times, or it spills on average 30 times a year. So sewage or uh, storm discharge goes into the sea, sorry, goes into the river 30 times a year. After two thirds of eligible res residents took up Southern Water's offer of a free water buck and free installation, no money is exchanged, Southern Water will never ask for money for this. The result has been a 70% reduction in water spills. And I'm putting out letters now to every community that is going to get these butts from Southern Water. I write to them first. So I've written to Gurnard, and that letter has almost gone out to all the residents, relevant residents in Gurnard. It's going out in uh, Fishbourne and Wooden next. It's going out in Freshwater afterwards. And I'm encouraging the more people that take up this offer of a free water butt, the more successful the scheme. But just winding up, by improving pumping stations, replumbing parts of the drainage system, providing, providing slow-release butts and redesigning surfaces to make them more porous, we are effectively changing the system for the better. And overall, thanks to the Secretary of State, thanks to the Environment Bill, thanks to the sewage plans that we have, thanks to the National Water Plan, we have a positive plan for Britain. Labour are playing catch-up. They offer nothing but second-rate class war rhetoric yeah. and the politics of the abuse and hate. And I strongly support the government's motion. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well yeah. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Yeah. Good water quality is something that everyone in South End West takes extremely seriously. Our thousand-year cockle industry, our seafront businesses, Sea Life Adventure, Adventure Island, Rotty's Ice Cream, which attract six million tourists to our beaches, all of these depend on the quality of our coastal waters, and that is why it is so important we are honest and truthful about the progress which this Conservative Government has made in improving our water quality over the past decade. And frankly, the fear mongering and electioneering that we've seen from the other side today is shameful. These are the facts. These are the facts. Successive Conservative governments have increased the percentage of bathing waters classified as good or excellent from 76% in 2010 to now 93%. That's an increase of over 20%. It includes every single bathing water in my beautiful constituency, and it's significantly higher than the European average, which is only 88%. Yeah. There, is, there is now 80% less phosphorus in our waters, 85% less ammonia uh, in our waters compared with 1990 when the water companies were privatised. And that is why we have an explosion of seals, of porpoises, of octopuses, yeah. and why RAS is now found uh, uh, off uh, South End uh, when once it was a rarity. And only two weeks ago, I joined the Environment Agency and South End Against Sewage and the famous Blue Tits Chill Swimming Group to test the quality of the water at Chalkwell Beach and once again found it to be excellent. You're welcome to come any time. However, I'm not suggesting that we don't have a problem. I'm not suggesting that any dumping of sewage into our waterways uh, should be condoned. Of course it shouldn't, which is why I'm proud we have a government, the first government, which has brought in to play a storm overflow sewage reduction plan, a government which is going to see investment of £56 million pounds in modernising our storm. This is huge. Sorry, £56 billion. Pounds. This is absolutely huge. It is more than the entire Scottish Government's budget in one year. It's also why I am bearing down on my water company all the time. I held a water summit in my patch and brought all the, all the stakeholders together to make sure that my CEO is well aware of the obligations placed on him by this Conservative Secretary of State of this Conservative Government, so that every one of my constituents by the 30th of June, that is only in 10 weeks' time, will know the action plan for each of the storm overflows in my constituency, the number and duration of spills, and most critically, when are improvements going to be delivered and the outcomes of interventions. These are the actions that my constituents want to, be, want to see happening. These are the actions of a responsible, serious government. Tim Farron. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. It is our privilege in Cumbria to not just be stewards of the fells and the dales, but also of our lakes, our rivers and uh, our coastal waterways. And that is why we are angry that six out of ten of the longest spills of sewage in this country in 2022 happened in our county of Cumbria. For 169 days, the River Kent at Staveley saw sewage pumped into it. 101 days, the River Eden at Kirby Steeden. It's 252 days, the River Ayr at Cark, Windermere, 
the centre of the Lake District tourism and economy, the largest lake in England, for 5,000 outlets sewage is pumped into the lake or its tributaries. And that's not, of course, just uh, only in Cumbria. As I speak today, sewage is being discharged into the River Mole at Isha. It happened 220 times last year. 280 spills happened in Winchester, 750 spills happened in Lewis, 2,200 in the borough of Stockport. All of these, all of these were legal. Legal. United Utilities in the North West, of course, is the worst offender. Why? Because England is the wettest bit of England and therefore storms happen more often and overflows are therefore permitted more often. Let us also look at the situation with regard to bathing water. We've heard many people talk about bathing water status. It's a very important way of ensuring higher quality. Coniston Water, River Kent, we bid in both cases for clean water, uh, for, for bathing water status and were turned down despite being more popular bathing sites than many places that were granted. We've heard about monitoring, and I hear what members opposite say about this, but in 2021, 12% of the monitoring stations were faulty. Last year, 16% were faulty. So what we do know is probably an underestimate of the state of the problem. We've talked about uh, uh, legal dumping of sewage. What about illegal dumping? In 2021 and 2022, there were 827 offences, illegal dumps of sewage. How many of those were prosecuted of the 827? 16. 16, Mr Deputy Speaker, which means this government has effectively de decriminalised the dumping of sewage in our rivers, our lakes and our coastal waterways. The water companies know this is going to happen, so they factor in the fines because it's cheaper to pay the fines than it is to invest in the infrastructure. Structure. We know that since privatisation, £65.9 billion in dividends have been paid to water companies. 20% increase in executive pay last year. We say or we hear of the government talking about the polluter should pay. Yes, the polluter pays. The polluter pays themselves massive, massive bonuses. And that is why we are outraged in Cumbria and across this country. Because it's not just the biodiversity threat to our lakes and rivers, the threat to fish stocks, to those who swim, to our pets that use our waterways, to the tourism economy that it underpins in the Lake District in particular, but because of a sense of deep injustice that large corporations rake in enormous profits while this government does nothing to stop them pumping sewage into those waterways that we value so dearly in Cumbria and elsewhere. Nobel. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I'd like to start on a positive note by thanking those who have actively engaged in this subject, because it's a public health, environmental and economic issue, and, but it is an absolute catastrophe for our country. I'd also like to thank my friend Singer, now turned formidable environment campaigner Fergal Sharkey, for his tireless work in bringing to life the impact of sewage dumping is having on every part of our country. It's also important to recognise the important work of campaign group Top of the Poops alongside uh, Surfers Against Sewage in collating constituency data that allows the public to see the extent of the Tory sewage scandal on the areas they live, work and holiday. There have been some extremely powerful speeches from our benches uh, who have illustrated the impact of the sewage scandal on the they represent. The member for Iwin made a good point about excessive corporate pay, the Honourable Member for Lancaster and Fleetwood about the effect on biodiversity on our birds and our fish. The Honourable Member for Stockport points out the bills have gone up by 40 per cent. Uh, unfortunately, we've got limited time, so I'm going to try and make some progress. The Honourable Member for Luton South rightly highlighted the importance of uh, the unique habitats that chalk streams provide. The Member for Barnsley Central pointed out that we need increased regulation, which is good for people. The Honourable Member for Withenshaw and Sale West, alongside other North West members, rightly pointed out that United Cities have the highest number of discharges. The Honourable Member for Chester pointed out that, that um, constituents suffered um, heavily uh, due to overflows uh, in her constituency. The Honourable Member for Limerick and Devonport, who I know is a keen wild swimmer, has been an excellent campaigner for clean bathing water status in Plymouth Sound. I hope to uh, uh, see that uh, in fruition. The Honourable Member for Bladen rightly pointed out that the Government has a 27-year plan, and who can wait that long to see our rivers be clean? The Honourable Member for Canterbury, where I've swum at Whitstable, pointed out that now swimmers are unable to swim on that beach because of sewage. The Honourable Member for um, Salford pointed out that the United Utilities use the courts to protect themselves from private prosecution, which is exactly why we need this bill today. 
The Honourable Member for Liverpool Wavertree pointed out the dangers sewage poses, the ambitious plans of our Metro mayors. The Member for Reading East told of the horrendous 17 hour spill just outside Reading, and our bill will end these types of incidents. And the Honourable Member for Warwick and Leamington rightly mentioned suds and grey water storage as part of the solution. So many excellent speeches. We have to ask ourselves. Is the water industry operating in the public interest? No. Is it right that Tories allowing water companies to dump raw sewage into our waters? No. Is it time for change? Yes. But of course we can't and won't just let water companies off the hook. We shouldn't allow them just to walk off the pitch and wash their hands of this with £72 billion out in dividends leaving behind a broken system. I'll, I'll give way to the Honourable Member Wawa as I co-chair the Ukraine group with him. Um, his, his front bench colleague made a, a truly dire attempt at public speaking a bit earlier. In, in, in it, he, he avoided most of the questions put to him, but one of the critical ones was why under the last Labour government did Labour allow the utility firms to self-monitor and did that not exemplify an uncomfortable corrupting relationship between the last Labour government and the public utilities? Yeah. Um, when, when Labour left office in 2010, the Environment Age stated the rivers were the cleanest at any time since before the Industrial Revolution. That is Labour's record. That is Labour's record, Mr Deputy Speaker. I just want to say it shouldn't be left to us or the public to clean up the mess or to pay the price Tory failure, but we're going to have to do it. Look. We also heard arguments on the other side that this involves households picking up the tab, but households won't have to pick up the tab because, unlike the government's plan, what we're saying doesn't need to increase taxpayers' bills. As the Honourable Member for Oldham Western Royton pointed out at the debate, in the absence of a credible plan, Labour has done the Secretary of State's job for by bringing forward a marine plan that delivers mandatory monitoring on all sewage outlets and a standing charge pen for penalty for order companies that don't have properly budget monitors in place, delivers automatic fines for polluters, which is not happening under the government, gives regulators the power and requires them to properly enforce the rules, sets legally binding sewage dumping reduction charges will end the tourist sewage scam by 2030, not 2050, and crucially ensures that any failure to improve is paid for by water companies who won't be able to just pass on to customers' bills or by slashing investment. What we've set out in this bill is just the first phase of Labour's plan to clean up the mess. Absolutely. We're under no illusions the system is fundamentally broken, which is why we need a phase two plan, which will set out in due course to reform the sector, placing delivery for the public good at the heart of the water industry. Because there, doesn't need, there does need to be a great degree of public oversight in the running of the water industry to protect the public interest. Because under the Tories, households are paying the price of a failing water industry. Firstly, in having to pay for sewage treatments as part of their water bills, whilst Tories allow corner cutting and raw sewage to be dumped in our waters instead of being treated properly. I recently discovered that only 37% of our sewage treatment plants even have storage tanks. So others just discharge straight into the local river. So even the simplest precautions are not being taken in the majority of uh, sewage plants. I think that time is against us. Yes, Deputy Speaker has indicated me here, so I unfortunately cannot take any more interventions. Secondly, paying the price for the impact that this is having on the NHS, on the economy and our environment. At this point, I'm not surprised that conduct of Tory MPs once again stood up one after the other and merely read out the cobbled lines of the panic government whips. That is not true. I wrote this speech, thank you. I was trying to find any serious reasons for blocking Labour's common sense approach. It is a symptom of a Tory government that has run out of road and of ideas when it's only able to resort to this. It's unfortunate and slightly embarrassing for them. The government whips have misunderstood Labour's plan fed Tory MPs inaccurate numbers and got their maths wrong, which is no surprise looking at the state of our economy. The Minister may wish to correct the record on their behalf, as if they have read the bill, they see there are safeguards on this that stop anybody from gaming the system. And in any case, the Government's own economic regulator, Inofwat, already has the power to protect customer bills. The Secretary of State's own department has already undertaken a cost-benefit analysis of Labour's plans, which shows the cleaning up of this mess would cost water companies a fraction of the £72 billion they have taken out in dividends. There is no reason for inaction. And how much is that inaction costing the NHS 
businesses that are forced to pull down the shutter because of sewage dumping. But as usual with the Tories, there's always a reason not to act in the public interest, and nothing is ever their fault. Bluster, blame game and blocking measures to clean up their mass sewage dumping mess. You've named it, they blamed it. I've heard it all this afternoon, where there's people who use their toilets, uh, the Welsh Government home drainage systems, and the Secretary of State even blamed the Victorians uh, for this mess. <laughs> over a hundred years ago. In case they've forgotten, it's the Tories in Westminster who are responsible for economic regulation of water in England and Wales, the leaders of power that are key to improving industry performance and holding water companies to account. The Tory MPs now have a second chance to do the right thing, having previously voted to continue sewage dumping. If they vote with Labour today, we can end the sewage scandal once and for all. The alternative is simply to follow the lead by continuing to vote for sewage dumping for no good reason. And if they do refuse to back our plan, it's either because they've not bothered to read the bill or are blindly following the direction of the Secretary of State, or they just don't understand the bill based, as uh, we've heard, based on their contributions and are inadvertently misleading the House for reasons to continue to vote for sewage dumping. Let me be clear, the public are watching and listening. The choice this evening is a simple one. They can either vote for our plan to end Tory sewage scandal by 2030, with water companies finally being made to do jobs that House are already paying them to do, or they can allow for a second time to allow dumping raw sewage in the constituencies that we all represent. Thank you, Mr Deputy yeah. Speaker. Uh, and uh, the government front bench can take equal time uh, on the wind up. Rebecca Pack. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for that, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And this debate provides a welcome and much needed opportunity to set the record straight yeah. on sewage and what this government is doing. And not only are we taking this issue extremely seriously, but we are and have been acting. We have a realistic, costed plan to clean up our network of rivers and coasts, and it's already in operation. And what a tide of positivity we have had from these benches on this side today. And we have had, uh, uh, we have had all of our colleagues who have a general consensus that this government has a pragmatic practical, costed, reliable, yeah. comprehensive plan. Those words have been used by all colleagues and all pulling together to understand this issue. That includes right, uh, my honourable friends from North East Herefordshire, Keatley, St Ives, North Norfolk, Gedling, Totnes, Truro and Farnworth, Hastings and Rye, Runnymede and Weybridge, yeah. Ashfield, plain speaking as ever, yeah. um, South West Herefordshire, North Devon, wonderful adaptive surfing centre, a Cluid South, North West Norfolk, Norfolk and from Ludlow, who actually systematically unpicked the plan <laughs> of the Labour Party uh, by himself. And I've got to say um, that through today's debate, I can't help but feel that for the opposition, this is nothing but a political game. To fire up those outside of this place. Uh, to view this as some kind of game that they're trying to make. Uh, and what, what I would like to say is that actually Labour's plan is completely superfluous. Where have they been? Because we're doing all these things that they asked for and more. It was this government that uncovered the scandal of storm sewage overflows being used far too frequently, because it was this party that increased the monitoring of storm sewage overflows. We've ramped it up from 7%, a paltry 7% under the Labour Party, to 91% now, and it'll be 100% by the end of the year. And it was indeed the Labour government that were taken to court for pollution. So where that idea of all those clean rivers come from, I do not know. Uh, but what did we discover from all of our monitoring? We discovered that indeed water companies were using storm fluid sewage overflows far too frequently, and it was and is completely unacceptable. So what did we do? We 
acted. We brought in the Environment Act to require a new storm overflow discharge reduction plan, fully costed with a clear impact assessment, delivering up to £56 billion of capital investment to revolutionise our Victorian infrastructure. And we're consulting on lifting the cap on fines entirely for the Environment Agency to I- issue potentially unlimited penalties on water companies, in addition to off what's existing powers to fine companies up to 10% of annual turnover. Offwatt has strengthened its powers on executive pay awards so that if water companies want to pay bonuses, even if environmental performance is found to be wanting, then shareholders must pay for this, not customers. And through the new Water Restoration Fund, money collected through fines will be spent on improving water quality. Um, My honourable friend from Plymouth and uh, and, and Sutton and Devonport needs to get with the programme. We've already done what he asked. Our treasury friends sit here. They agreed. We're bringing new new monitoring requirements as well under the Environment Act for near real-time reporting on storm overflows. And uh, the Honourable Member for uh, Friend for Truro and Farmworth asked, uh, could we do more? Yes, we are going to increase water quality monitoring upstream and downstream. I, I'm not going to give way because there just simply is not time. Yeah. I note um, that the Honourable Member uh, likes our, our monitoring uh, ideas so much that are in the Environment Act that he's actually put uh, our monitoring framework for the Environment Act as Clause 1 in his bill. No. Thank you. No. We also recently published our integrated plan for water. This includes an announcement that we are accelerating £1.6 billion of investment into reducing storm overflow discharges, upgrading wastewater treatment works and measures to improve drought resilience. The whole issue is really complicated. Uh, and that's why I made uh, this a priority when I came into the department. And our plan for water sets out how we will deliver the improvements we need across all matters connected to water, including all forms of pollution. And please remember that no one on this side of the House ever voted to allow raw sewage into yeah. rivers. Yeah. We voted. We voted to put measures in place to clean up our rivers, and the opposition voted against them. What we've actually done is produce much cleaner water since Victorian times, with almost the best, highest quality drinking uh, water in the world, and bathing water is 93 per cent excellent. Mr Speaker, Mr Deputy Speaker, how could we take uh, the suggestions made by the Labour benches on sewage seriously? Their plans, their plans would potentially require pipes to be dug up, enough pipes to be dug up in all our roads uh, that would go two and a half times around the globe. Can anyone imagine the disruption that would cause, not to mention being totally impractical? And, Mr Deputy Speaker, um, is how is it going to be paid for? We have not heard any clear indication of how Labour's plan will be paid for. Will it be added to customer bills? Uh, the Shadow Minister couldn't answer that on Sky this morning, and I didn't hear it this afternoon. And as for the Lib Dems, it's really not worth commenting on what they say. Uh, the, scale of, the scale of this government's ambition cannot be highlighted enough, and I urge all colleagues to support the government motion as amended. Right. A little bit of procedure first, which is <clears throat> the government have made an amendment and we are voting on the amendment first, simply because the amendment deletes text. So the amendment's coming first, and I am anticipating, should the amendment be passed, that there will be then a second vote on the main question. Unlike the second debate, where the amendment is of substance, and therefore the opposition question will be put first. Did you all get that? (laughs) Division? (laughs) Turn your papers over and begin. So here we go. It's the amendment first. 
The question is that the amendment be made. As many of that opinion say aye. Aye! Of the contrary, no. No! Vision, clear the lobby. Order. The question is the amendment be made. As many of that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary, no. 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 Tell us for the ayes, Robert Largan and Faye Jones. Tell us for the noes, Navendu Mishra and Gerald Jones.
Order! Order! The eyes to the right, 290. The nose to the left, 188. Thank you. The eyes to the right, 290. The nose to the left, 188. So the eyes have it. The eyes have it. Unlock. So we now come to the main motion as amended. So the question is that the main motion as amended be agreed to. As many of that opinion say, aye. Aye. Of the contrary, no. No. I will remind you that you really should follow your voices, so I don't want to see a zero at the end of the other one. Division, clear the lobby. Order. Order. The question is that the main motion as amended be agreed to. As many of that opinion say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Aye. Tell us for the ayes, Robert Largan and Faye Jones. Tell us for the noes, Gareth Johnson and Sir Robert Goodwill.